Okay, I guess I gotta tilt that fan away. Yeah, it's gonna kill me. Like it's not happening, it's gonna kill me. Okay. Okay. There we go. We're gonna turn that way. My way, I mean all the way. There we go. <clears throat> um. Hey, how's it going? Um. Uh, no, Sonia, mm, I mean, is, but I, I've been very comfortable giving her a little extra time to get here. And she's not feeling very well. Huh. Oh. It is uh very quickly, very, very noticeably hot without the fan. Alright. Oh, there she is. Should have done this a ton of times. Da -da -da -da. Move to there. Hello. Hey. How are you feeling? Mm, feeling better, that's for certain. Good. I'm still I'm doing a little bit of recovery here, but the coconut water seems to be helping. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I didn't even know any of that stuff was going on. Yeah, we had a fire in uh, the county over last. Huh. And uh, it it got a little out of hand. They've got it under control now, but like the smoke drifted west and south to us. And it was in the middle of me doing a bunch of gardening, and it was really hot outside. And I was trying to get a bunch of things done, so I was pushing it in the heat. Um, it was like 100 degrees, so... Uh, I know it's been it's been hot where I'm at, and uh, I've been super lucky that uh, nobody's made me go outside and work. It's been all office stuff all week. I I don't envy you. You're uh, you're brave for doing that. <laughs> it was um, not so much brave as it was <laughs> that I had delayed the things that I needed to do. <laughs> sure, it was like running out of time to get stuff done. So uh, if I had if I had gotten up earlier, I would have been much better off. But I got up really late. Story of my life. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I get that. Um, I, I, I guess just really value your garden then. Jeez. Uh, well, I, I, I genuinely hope that uh. You, 
you value yourself a little more next time that uh because i kind of read and like i just missed the part about the fire when you told me um and i sent you a couple messages and i was like wait a minute did you say fucking fire what <laughs> uh okay um let me address that uh yeah so <laughs> i guess i just been a I guess saying that I, I've been a little concerned since I read that, uh, uh, may, maybe an understatement. That's, uh, that's a scary thing to hear, but I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing better. Sorry, I'm not trying to, like, like, bog you down about it. Uh, oh, that's all right. That's, I appreciate the concern. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a, um, we've had a number of fires, unfortunately. It's just something that happens these days in California. I mean, we always get a lot of fires in California, but it's been especially bad the last several years. Like it started really getting bad in 2017. Uh, I actually worked with a um, with a team of people to get homeless people out of the smoke and get them into shelter and find them uh, medical treatment and stuff. And like there were people with respiratory issues that we're trying to get we're like we're prioritizing getting people with respiratory issues and health issues out of the smoke first and getting them to see doctors and stuff and getting them all housed in a couple of of warehouses and a gym and we had to retrofit the warehouses because they weren't equipped for filtering out the smoke um and so we had to retrofit the 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 air filtration for them and it was it was bad there were so many people we had to get up a bunch of n95 masks too and the smoke was so bad like you couldn't see more than about 100 feet in front of you at best and it was like silhouettes at 100 feet in front of you that was about all you could see um so we're kind of used to it we've we've gotten into a bit of a rhythm for how to deal with the the mega fires in california i assume too that like um considering that you probably know exactly like like, um, I guess to me, if I wasn't feeling well and I knew there was fire, like, I wonder if it's from that. You, you're probably familiar with this feeling then, yeah? Yeah, the pattern is pretty obvious now. Jesus. Uh, to a point where I can generally be spot on recognizing, it, like, oh, I've inhaled too much smoke today. Uh, and when it's really hot, it's hard to deal with because like, yeah. you put on a, a, you can't just put on like a simple little, you know, mask you gotta put on a respirator so you gotta have like an n95 well yeah, good luck yeah. working in 100 degree heat with an n95 mask on um i'm more afraid of covid than anybody so as hot as it's been i've been wearing an n95 masks i get it um but i you know yeah. when you when you said that you're like it's it's not so bad I, it's it's not so bad but when it's 100 like i just imagine uh you you helping people out of like thick thick smoke and one of the people with you is like this is awful. You're like, please. It's not. It's not even that hot outside. <laughs> um, uh, it's rough. A lot of people who are working on that force to get people out of the smoke actually got sick in the process because they were. Um, it I was imagine hot. so. Yeah, it's hot, and you're trying to deal with a bunch of different things, <laughs> and you're out there exerting yourself. Um. Yeah, and you're trying to keep everything organized, and yeah, you know, we had multiple people who ended up getting sick, and one person ended up hospitalized, an elderly man who had like respiratory and heart, like cardio um, uh, issues. So we had to get him hospitalized, and he was like one of the workers, right? He wasn't even one of the homeless people. Oh, so geez, it could be rough work. Um, it. Do you do you talk about this a lot? The the fire, uh, like the fire rescue stuff. Not really. Fucking saint. Uh, <laughs> I I had a feeling you're gonna say that too. Damn, I didn't even like. Uh, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I swear to God, I'm not like trying to kiss your ass, but like, you're like a, a legitimate hero for that shit. Uh, that's a big deal. I don't know. I I know people that wouldn't won't fucking wouldn't get up to uh, like pick me up off the side of the road because it's too hot. Like fuck that, dude. You fucking call an Uber or something. It's it's ninety five out. I ain't leaving my house. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I work with, there's, well, I'm on a couple of call lists, though I haven't been doing much recently because my back issues have been so bad, especially since the pandemic. Uh, but I'm on a call list for the local Gurdwara and the, the local mosque, as well as a couple of the Hindu temples in the area. And uh, and I've had calls for various things to like when they've got some kind of mutual aid thing that they're doing, they put out like you you're, you they they used to message me on Facebook, but I got rid of my Facebook, and they have nice. a newsletter that they do over that they do over email. Except one of them doesn't even have that, so I'm missing some of the updates from them. But they basically just, they blast out these notices like, hey, we need people for this coming up soon here whoever can volunteer please get back to us and then if i've got the time and if i'm feeling well i go ahead and i sign up for it and do it and they also have like specialists on call as well so like i'm on call for uh like um for audio uh audio kind of stuff so like the the gurdwara has called me up before to ask me up ask me for help with their audio rig and uh, but I've not really gotten many calls for that. And there are other things that you know that I've specialized in, and that other people specialize in as well, just to kind of so they have a pool of people to pull from and find someone available to help them out with whatever project. Uh, yeah, that's that's fucking amazing. Um, like I guess just uh, I guess. Me like my uh at least as far back as I can remember, like my like stated mission in my life is to uh like I know I can die and feel good about it if I uh did my best to try to help as many people as I can. Uh that's mm -hmm. like a big deal for me. Um I remember like uh my wife hears about all the time I didn't pick up uh somebody who was walking in the rain like kind of outside of town and I think about it all the time, but I didn't I couldn't because like I had uh, my wife in the car, and I don't know this person, and I, I was just really felt weird about not doing it. And like you're doing awesome, like I, I, that's inspiring. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, for uh, somebody who often feels like uh, I should be doing more to help people, that's uh, inspiring to hear. You like it's not like it's at no cost to you. Uh, you're a fucking badass. I I would have never known. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't usually talk about those things. Um, I I feel that it has a couple of problems when talking about it. Most I see like a lot of people talking about mutual aid stuff, and it's it sounds more often than not like people are kind of um, using it as a They're cheap way to dick, get right? clout. Yeah, yeah, like a way of saying I I do these great things. So I don't usually talk about them too much. And I feel that it also creates a bit of a problem as well. I've had this policy for a long time to just not talk too much about certain things that I do, uh, you know, because I feel that they'll become corrupted by ego, right? Um, sure. Because I've seen this pattern so many times with so many people where they talk more and more about the things that the selfless things that they do and it becomes this egotistical thing after a while it becomes tainted by it and it then becomes motivated by the positive social reward that they get for doing those things and then it becomes that there's a a synthetic nature to it where it's it's not motivated by the original intentions it's motivated by something superficial it's about getting pats on the back and getting financial reward and all these other things and so I've never really been big about talking about those things. If somebody asks me about them, I'll go ahead and talk about them, but I don't usually just like volunteer this stuff. Usually I typically try to stray, you know, just instead I'd rather encourage people to do those things, talk about what they can do, which is something I've definitely done before. I've talked about it on my streams. I've talked about it on other streams before. I've talked about it on Twitter. I've linked to things before where I've like, hey, instead of virtue signaling all this stuff, why don't you actually go to this site and pull up this list of bills, anti-trans bills that are going on across the U.S. and call their respective the respective representatives and tell them to to vote it down, you know? So I'll talk. I'll do things like that instead, and 
because I think that's a better way of doing it without getting your ego tied up in the mix. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um. I uh. I'm a really big um philosophy nerd, and I really like um ethics and morality and i think about a lot uh like moral desserts uh is like what you're talking about uh people wanting to be rewarded for uh doing the good stuff that they do uh when i i i think it's generally agreed upon that the good deed itself should be the good thing um and it's it's kind of hard if you care about it if you care about the thing and you want more people to care about the thing because you care about it uh, like how to walk that line, and I think that uh, I have a hard time with that too. Um, because yeah. you think you, I, I get it. it's it's a really weird uh line to walk. Um, and I I try to um it, to the point to where um it seems like things that are important to me. Uh, sometimes I feel like I maybe I don't talk about them enough because I'm afraid. Like it's it's almost like it works in reverse for me. Um, but I think, uh, I get it in the position that you're in. Uh, you don't want to, uh, I, I think you seem like you don't, you don't, you don't want to cheapen it. You don't want to, um, end up doing things for the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah. So once you get down the path of doing something for egotistical reasons, I mean, it's all, it's impossible to avoid the ego no matter what I think. Sure. But once you get down the path of really doing things for the praise and for the celebration and the, the lifting up of your character. Sure. More and more you start cutting corners and, and you can lose sight of why it is that you do something and then it can become harmful. I agree. Um, well, I can tell you, I guess, uh, it's definitely not the case. Uh, I don't think I don't think I'm ever in danger of that. Like the, like my my big stake in the ground that I uh, try to avoid talking to people about very directly uh, is that I'm I'm vegan and I try not to. I didn't want anybody at my job to know, and like ever got blown day one when the boss wanted to buy everybody steakhouse food, um, and uh, the only thing I ever do is I just try to get people. So I just try to get like, uh, do you want to try this? Like I just offer them some of my food so they know it's not scary. But I don't try to talk to people about it. I try to talk to yeah. them about how they eat because I don't want them to. I don't want to make anybody feel bad, and I don't. Uh, I don't want them to think that I think that I'm better than them. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm similar with my approach to being a vegetarian. Oh, um, are you? Yeah, Hell I, yeah. I do a little bit of deviation into dairy sometimes, but overall, I tend to be pretty strictly vegetarian sometimes vegan and mo overall my goal is to do a sustainable diet with as little cruelty as possible and to kind of focus on more like the total value of it which would be like for instance if i were going to eat meat it would be because i need to and if i were going to do that then i would source the meat myself so like there was a time when i ate some fish for a while and I was pretty strict about where I got the fish from. I wanted to get it from a direct source oh. where I knew where it came from. I had somebody for a while fishing for me. And then when I got to the point where I felt I could do some of the fishing on my own, I fished for myself. And it was because I had um, I was I had spine surgery and the bone graft wasn't incorporating properly. And I was recovering from a long period of, of celiac disease that my doctors had uh diagnosed me very late and I had a lot of damage to my intestines and I wasn't absorbing enough protein from normal sources Sure. and stronger sources were harder on my intestines like soy and legumes so my doctors basically said look you need to have a really mild diet but you still need high protein sources the best bet you're going to get is going to be fish Sure. and so when um, in 2015 when i was recovering from my spine surgery i started eating fish and i was you know it was very i tried to just make sure that what i was doing was you know was as direct as possible not going through industry and once i recovered enough i went out and went fishing with a friend of mine so i could source it myself and same thing, if I were going to eat meat, if I were going to eat meat, I would want to find a way to source it myself, either going hunting 
or raising and slaughtering it myself. Um, and I... oh, go ahead. it's just, for me, it's about like consumption plus cruelty, right? So the more that I'm buying into an industry that's that um that abstracts the human from the cost of their consumption and the cruelty that it causes you know that's 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 feeding into the problem that i observe industrialized farming and the, the demand for meat uh and so i don't want to put any money into that if i can avoid it so i'd rather find a route that is more direct that isn't feeding into that and you know it, it's and it has me being a part of the process as opposed to just ignoring the cost of life and ignoring what's happening you know and being distant from it you know just shopping at a grocery store nonchalantly and not caring about where it comes from i i do think and um i think that there might be a lot of people uh Probably my, but I have a buddy who or has a high level job in PETA, and he might not like hearing me say this, but um, I think that it is um, so I I, I guess a buddy of mine uh, a couple of days ago was talking to me about it, and he said, yeah, no, he gave me some hypothetical, and I said, well, yeah, better is always like, like not as bad is always better, of course, one hundred percent. I I genuinely think that um. You have much more of a like moral leg to stand on if if you if you're actually like killing the animal yourself. Um, that's one of the things that when somebody does uh, want to talk to me about it, uh, and I say like, do you think you could really kill the animal yourself? And if you are, um, you know, I you're owning it. You're you're not. Uh, I, one of my big problems, I think, is that a lot of people have cognitive dissonance about what's going on with their food, and it's bad for people too. It's not good for mm -hmm. you to uh, to be separated from what's happening. I think it's like really bad for people mentally. So I, I do respect yeah. that a lot more um, than the uh, like any kind of farming or anything. And I would say that when you uh, when you were in the hospital, if you were just kind of on like, I'm not eating any animal products, or like, hey, you need to eat fish and you ate fish, that's still vegan in my book. Um, if you have to do it, you have to do it. Uh, I was like, I would probably kill a person to save my life. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's You got to do what you got to do. Uh, you come first. Uh, that's uh, pretty... I, I, I like everything that you said. As far as... Um, somebody that does consume animal products goes um i think that's about as good as it gets uh and i 100 yeah. percent didn't uh, expect to have a conversation i'm not yeah i guess i wasn't planning on throwing any of that stuff at you like that but it's, you're um <laughs> you're a, uh, a lot more impressive of a person uh character wise than i would have guessed uh i mean that with respect uh you know i don't hear a lot of people saying and doing the stuff that you just told me uh it's just impressive i not that i had a bad opinion of you but do you know what i'm saying you caught you caught yeah. me off guard <laughs> surprised you. um um i yeah. oh please go on i guess I didn't know. most of what people know about me is panels right so it's yeah. not like i'm ever talking about myself I and what i'm know. doing I'm always talking about somebody else's topic. Um, there, I used to do stream hopping where I would hang out on someone's stream and we kind of shoot the shit and talk and anything would come up. And so sometimes you'd end up talking about something about your life, mm -hmm. but not, not really much of that these days. I haven't done that for quite a while, but there's probably not a lot of opportunity for you to hear these things. <laughs> Cause yeah, I'm always I... talking about someone else's topic. Yeah, I guess so. And um, I, uh, I, I don't know if you really have a any kind of idea. I know I just briefly when I messaged you. So the I, I'm working on a project about Mr. Girl, but um, I've gotten to talk to some uh, really interesting people already. And uh, I, yeah, like I have, uh, I. I I definitely uh, realized my first time going into it, uh, I talked to Baby, uh, he gave me like no time to write anything down. He was like, I'll be ready in like 20 minutes. Like, okay. 
Um, so when I when I got put in the pencil of paper here, I realized that there's no reason for me not to find out about the people that I'm talking to at the same time. Because uh, you're right, not a lot of people, uh, especially in uh, Twitch politics, um, nobody asks each other about themselves. Uh, they just, uh, like, I love a debate just as much, if not more, than the next guy, but, like, I'm interested in the people that are having the conversations, uh, and it, it doesn't seem like uh, the people that they're talking to are interested in uh, learning about the people that they're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you've really opened my eyes to tell, like, how much we're maybe missing out on by uh, just, like, approaching it that way. And, uh, like, it, even somebody like me who's in the audience a lot is encouraging it to be that way. Um, I think we're fucking up a little bit there. And I, I don't think I would, uh, it's the first time it's really occurred to me. Uh, yeah. By I the mean, way, yeah. Uh, just shout out to your chat. I haven't actually checked out your stream yet. Oh, thank you. Oh, Cam, what's see. up? I just popped it open. Hello. <laughs> Hi, chat. Oh, it's... Um... Thank you. Oh, wait, no, I don't recognize the name. Sorry, Will. I thought William and his channel was somebody else. You, Will and his you thought you had something for a minute, huh, Will? <laughs> um, yeah, that's... um, and, and maybe that's why I'm working on this project. I was supposed to talk to forever and ever ago. I was supposed to... Oh, thank you. Uh, no I was supposed to interview uh, Perspective Philosophy, but he just about himself, because I talked to him a few times in private, and I was like, I don't know anything about you. We spent all this time talking about philosophy, and I don't know a single thing about you. Uh, and uh, he said, yeah, that's cool, and I'm going to get to do it in the near future now. We finally set a time, but like, like that's the first time that it even occurred to me that like um, somebody that I watch a lot of stuff about, and I uh, know a lot about their opinions on things, I don't know anything about him. And I don't know why that didn't transfer over to, like, everybody else. Uh, I feel like you lit, you lit the rest of the torch for me there. Because um, I think people are interesting. Like, I think politics are interesting and philosophy. Like, I have a lot of, like, nerdy interests and shit. But, like, people are probably the most interesting thing uh, in the world to me. Oh, my God. That was the fastest I've ever lost. I promise I'm not this bad at this game. Holy shit. Um, and, uh... Yeah, I think uh, just this um, unexpected way that we started this off uh, is going to shape how I move forward for sure. Because uh, I see no reason not to get to know people, uh, I think, even a little bit better than I had intended to uh, while, I'm, while I'm working on this thing that I'm working on. Uh, and so thank I you. I think, like, I'm often, I know that I kind of come off a little bit as a mystery because I'm never very direct about my, like whenever I introduce myself on a panel, I tend to meme and I will often say something extreme or absurd about myself. Like I'll say that I'm like a far right paleo Christian conservative or something, or I'll say I'm a, um, an enlightened centrist or a, um, what's your Twitter say? Or a fan of Stalin and a Marxist Leninist, you know, or something. I'll, I'll often say these things because I don't have any labels. I don't give them. Huh. Like if you were to analyze all my positions, I would definitely be pretty far to the left. Right. But I don't choose any labels because I think they're kind of lame. <laughs> I think it just causes us to prejudge each other. And it causes us to also cater our positions to our labels to in order to maintain our status with our labels. So I don't like either of those things. I don't like having that artificial sense of of political awareness that you're catering and tailoring to your labels and i don't like being prejudged by my labels i'd rather get to in or prejudging a person by their labels i'd rather us get to know each other and work through and find out whether or not we have things in common or not and where we agree and where we disagree but you know if i approach a conservative and my label is you know socialist they're going to be like oh you're one of those you're one of those commie. Well, yeah. I can dismiss everything you have to say. Yeah, so, before you even you know, say it. Yeah, so I don't choose any labels, which is why when I go onto a panel and I introduce myself, 
I tend to come up with something really absurd because like everybody will be talking about their political affiliation. And sure. so I feel a little obligated to say something. So I would just throw in something absolutely absurd. And um, and I won't, I oftentimes won't even laugh about it. I'll be, I'll just keep a straight face. Just and you'll see, like, the, yeah. And you'll see that the people who know me well will be like shaking their heads and stuff. But then every once in a while, there'll be something, something new on a panel who would be like, wait, what? <laughs> so um, it it's, it's sort of, it throws a bit of a curveball, but obviously it's not very honest. It's very, it's, it's um, a bit of a smoke screen. And yeah, so I, a lot of people don't get a good read on me politically because of that until they hear me start arguing my positions on a panel, then they start to figure out where it is that I'm at. Right. And I guess it kind of doesn't let them, it's not a bad uh, move either. Cause it doesn't let them already kind of like prep their responses before you start talking to like, all right, I know how I'm going to get them because people are really yeah. like that. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to say too, it seems like, uh, when, it, when I see, uh, somebody, uh, respond and say something ridiculous that like, it, it's pretty obvious that they don't hold this very silly position, um, that, uh, it, it always seems like a, um, like an evasive, uh, tactic. And I was going to ask, uh, after you said, but you even acknowledge that, uh, and I think that you have pretty decent reasons for doing it. Uh, it seems pretty legit i was gonna ask you too i just so i pulled up your when you said that i thought of your twitter bio immediately and i also seen that you uh <laughs> screenshotted the chat from uh my discord yeah. <laughs> oh i loved that whole exchange so much when i was reading through it like it just started off so good like yeah. uh you suggesting that i do a stream that you're the most base trans girl in twitch politics and uh kia weirds uh, uh he doesn't care I get to, I get to uh, I get to dox his name on there all I want. <laughs> all right. Uh, and I, he says I don't know Demon Mama exists and uh, and the fucking uh, Jimmy got mad about it. He said don't you start Jimmy. I'm like dude, the, you've had like three interactions with Jimmy and they're all being combative and it's fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> just the whole thing, like the whole thing, uh, just absolutely like uh, it was phenomenal and like no, but nobody uses my Discord. Uh, and so, like, that was, like, the first, like, meaningful exchange, and I could not have possibly been fucking happier. I have, I appreciate you for that, too. It was, it was good. But, um, <laughs> your Twitter bio, uh, when I see it, I'm just like, oh, well, the first thing I can't read, uh, because, is it, Can is it Sanskrit? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, look at me. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I know it's enough to sister. pretend I can know something. Okay. Uh, sex hater, arrow ace, void poster, I kink shame everyone. Uh, come for a low grade meth stay for the high class memes. Now, it's Twitter, so if I didn't see the last line, I maybe would just be like, maybe all the rest of this is legit. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, was like, sex hater, uh, I, I know what ace is. What's arrow ace even mean? A romantic, asexual. Oh, fucking damn it! Yeah, I did know that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> void poster. Sure. That's that's fine. Uh, and I, it seems like uh, uh, the kink shaming is like your main meme right now. When I go through your Twitter and stuff, and I like that. <laughs> uh, I've had so many people request that I kink shame them. I, I like ran out. I got tired of it because I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Are you kink shaming people for having a kink shaming kink now? <laughs> Actually, I have I specifically did not kink shame those people. <laughs> because I actually limits. said that this is a good kink to have and approved of it. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, uh it's I don't know. I don't think I don't think I could handle being that meta. <laughs> Like, this is too much for me. I'm sorry. Well, what's <laughs> funny is I recently got reminded by Erudite that my 2020 resolution or 2022 resolution was to go full meme. I had completely oh. forgotten about that. And she pointed it out and quoted it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That was my, my 2022 Wait. New Year's resolution. How are you spelling and, the word mean or meme? Meme. Okay, okay. I thought you said full mean. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want you to do that. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, pull no. memes. Fuck yeah. Balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah, so I've definitely been way more memey since the new year. And uh it's it's been it's been kind of fun. <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna it, lie. Your Twitter page um feels like a uh a fever dream of like uh like like subreddit and like fucking how my facebook looked when i still used facebook because my facebook was like 95 percent memes a bunch of people <laughs> wept when i uh stopped using facebook i get, I get yeah. banned for like 30 days and uh people like you you're finally back oh my god i get my, me my memes now they just caught me for a post in 2016 there was like a like a rainbow colored asshole uh, and it, like, like, not like, it was like, it was a picture of like the Aurora, it was supposed to be the Aurora Borealis, but it was literally a butthole. And, uh, <laughs> it stood for six fucking years and they popped me today for it. I got the notification because I only use Facebook for like, um, I'll put like stream notifications on there and, um, for like selling like magic cards and stuff and like buying like magic cards or other collectibles. That's it. That's all I use it for. I don't, I don't shit post anymore. I don't, uh, argue with my friends, crazy relatives anymore. Uh, I knew that it was bad for my mental health without feeling it, because it always feels good uh, when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But I just I read enough to know, so like I think it's just time that I don't. Um, but that's this yeah this your uh, Twitter page reminds me of like yeah if Reddit and my Facebook page had a baby. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Um, Sometimes I like I go on these dry spells where I don't do anything for a while. But then I'll come back and I'll just do a, like hammer out a bunch of video memes and and, and uh, image you know, graphic memes and such. But uh, yeah, it what I like doing is like is sort of a combination of being both serious as well as absurd at the same time, because you get the lightheartedness of the absurdity. But you can also still maintain a um, a thread of dialogue and can have a serious conversation about a discourse or something. Like there's one right now that's going on about anti-fascism that I've been chiming in on a lot, and that's what the most recent meme is on my on my profile. Is it says oh, my oh, Twitter God. timeline today? Oh, I thought you meant your your uh, banner. Sorry, go on. I'm oh, no. for it. Let's see. Your banner <laughs> no. is. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all fictional evil corporations. It was a lot to pride take in. Thing. Where? What? You said it, you posted it today. Yeah, just a little bit ago. It says my Twitter timeline today. It has me as as a samurai. Oh yeah, I was That's just looking at samurai. that for like the last like three minutes too, and I scrolled away from it to find what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's that's good. basically like I'm able to come and like dip into the discourse and have serious discussions and then occasionally come back out of it and just meme on it aggressively. So um, that's how this whole thing started initially with me putting out a meme that was the reservoir dog scene with the Mexican standoff and Mr. Orange shot on the ground and Mr. White defending him against his bosses. And um, and so I, I did the meme with Stardust as um, the underboss and then Wick as the boss and then Mad Latin as Mr. White and then responsible platforming as Mr. Orange on the ground bleeding out. <clears throat> and that was sort of what started my engagement in this whole discourse because I didn't actually comment on it initially, but I put that that meme out. And that meme actually angered some people on the other side of the the discourse, the people who are criticizing Stardust. So that started getting me commenting on it seriously, like actually engaging with it. And then I started grabbing clips from like Stardust and others and posting them up there with some commentary. And and then people are coming back and coming back at me and just you know giving me a bunch of crap and quote tweeting me out of context and all kinds of things and so then of course i just cap it off with this meme which is basically you know me standing there having slaughtered a bunch of people with all these labels on them with you know the various types of people that they are that i dealt with on twitter 
so, so it's kind of like end capped with memes. It started out with a meme that pissed a bunch of people off, and it ended with a meme with all of them dead. <laughs> I, I I love all of it, and um, I hope this is a compliment. Uh, when I looked at it the whole time, it didn't even occur to me that that was uh, that you photoshopped your face on there. I thought somebody photoshopped Jennifer Carpenter's face. <laughs> uh like until in like you were already talking about it like after i found it and was looking at it like oh i'm fucking stupid that's obvious obviously you it's on your timeline it makes perfect sense uh and i was just like i think like jennifer carpenter in that picture all right uh <laughs> and i absolutely don't know anybody's name ever so i had to look up what depth from dexter's name was in order to <laughs> properly inform you of uh what i was trying to say uh yeah i i really i really like the uh and every anything like really over the top and silly uh i'm all about it like i um i have a half calf adventure time tattoo because i kind of made a joke about getting one and a coworker told me he's like you wouldn't do that and i was just like i'm just, I, fuck you i'm so doing it now like if you like if it's that absurd to you that like like well, like we just met like uh, like four days ago and you're telling me no like I can't not do it now and it's not even to be, like be defiant because it was so uh, outside of like common sense to his mind that I might I was like I have to it's not an option uh, yeah and I and I love it I was lucky enough to get up get it done good. Um, but I guess. By the way, I just DM'd you the the meme that started the whole thing that got Hell people yeah. that started getting me tagged in a bunch of threads because of this. Let's see. Oh, oh, I did see this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's funny how that's the one that dragged me in. Like that one meme dragged me into the discourse, and then suddenly people are tagging me in various threads. Uh, that is funny, cause it's it's not that bad. Well, as well, what makes it funnier is what it's suggesting, because if you've seen the movie, I don't, have you seen the movie? I no. Okay, I don't well, want to spoil it for you then, but there's another list. meaning to it that you'll know if you've seen the movie. Okay, I'm gonna. And the most important part is Mad Latin being Mr. White there, and responsible platforming being Mr. Orange. So once you see the movie, you'll get the the meaning of the meme. Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs, right? Yeah. It's I have an actual list. It's on the list. No, a physical list. I'm not just bullshitting because uh, now I, I'm going to watch it just to get the meme and I'm assuming I'll probably enjoy it. Um, usually when people tell me to watch something uh, I don't, which is why I have a list now uh, and I don't for like years, but now um, I'm, they're usually right. People, people usually recommend things that are pretty good. And um, yeah. I feel like we've finally gotten to a good segue for the first thing I have written for you, Sure. Um, which is if uh somebody who watches this like an hour after uh doesn't uh know like your kind of uh stream is uh what uh like what how would you characters i tried really really hard to watch the first uh stream on your page today i have been obnoxiously busy all week mm -hmm. um and i seen like you have a video right on the front of your youtube uh and it looks um amazing there's like a really bad like cgi graphic off to the side of you and i was just like i want to see this and my my work was like non-stop i got like an hour break to uh uh do my therapy session on my phone and then i was right back to work and then i came and did uh birthday stuff because today's my kid's actual birthday and then this weekend we're doing the the party was it my channel intro or something or was it something Let else see Man, that's an old, out-of-date channel intro. I really should update it. I haven't been doing any content. I no. I really need to. It is... Where was it at? Oh, wait, on the videos, probably? No, I don't think it was the... I'll find it. Wait, how? Oh, welcome to my channel from a year ago. Channel. Yeah, it's that, that channel intro, but it's not like what 
shows up when I first go to your channel, though. Let's oh, see. oh, that's your favorite. Liar. I'm a liar. It sure is. Uh, it just played for like one second when I load a page. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I like my phone set open with it on there for uh, like at least four hours. Yeah. And I just uh, I just couldn't get get around to it. And I'm uh, uh, I'm like trying to like make sure that I I like all my questions and then I and that I'm like like wording them a little bit better and stuff while I'm doing it. And I was like, this would probably help me do that too. And I just um, I just for the last couple of days I've just been taking uh taking everything as it comes. I've been so busy. Uh, yeah. but I'm I. Beyond any shadow of a doubt, I'm gonna be checking out your like your channel, just not you on other people's channel because, um, you're you're a lot more interesting of a uh, a person than I think than just your um, just your silliness on the uh, other people's stuff led me to believe. <laughs> I'm certainly known for my silliness. <laughs> um, that's a good thing to be known for, at least in my book. I. I yeah. actively try hard to be uh, very silly. I think uh, my life is serious enough when I don't get to decide what it is that it's going to be. So if I can choose to be uh, obnoxiously weird and silly, I take the opportunity every chance I get. Yeah. Cam knows what's up. Oh, also, Cam the Jelly Man said hi. He's Hello. a good guy. Um. So yeah, what's what are your like main channel like this is like you streaming kind of stuff about? Well, I haven't done much lately. I've been um I've been dealing with some so I had a number of issues. I had two cats die on me. Oh Jesus. Uh, out of my three cats. All three are very old and two of them passed away in the last six months. Bobby passed away in early December and Sammy passed away in late April. I'm sorry. And I was just dealing with a lot of issues from that and my own health issues. And it, I, I was starting to do a resurgence in January and come back, but mm -hmm. um, just a combination of, of issues and Sammy's health deteriorating really kind of got me to the point where I wasn't streaming anymore and was having difficulty coping with her passing away. Is Sammy a cat too? Yeah. I think so, I was right. It was it was a bit of struggle, and I'm kind of like emotionally recovering now, like getting to the point where I'm feeling um, more mo emotionally stable and better able to handle things. And so I I do want to get back to streaming. It's just kind of getting back into the swing of things again. Is um, it's once you're out of the pattern, it's hard to get back into it. And... I believe that this has been uh I streamed like the last three nights in a row, I think, and it's it's hard. It's a lot it of work. Um Yeah. So um, not much these days. But when I do stream, I tend to stream political analysis. Um I covered a lot of the Ukraine uh stuff when it was in its early days. Did you do that with Stardust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stardust and I were like the two main people covering it. Okay, I thought so. Okay. And I did a lot of detailed breakdowns of um of like the UN and NATO and the history of relations between them and Ukraine and Russia and um and the EU. And so I did a lot of like detailed breakdowns on that. A lot of people came to my streams for specifically that kind of breakdown because they they liked what I talked about the details and the nuance in the geopolitics and that's fair that was what i was covering yeah uh even when i google stuff uh, every once in a while I'll google things and like i don't really feel like i'm learning anything when i'm reading news articles about uh i don't I, see that it's so crazy to me. i don't even know like officially what to call this war um Call it like Ukraine Russia war, or like that's how I Google it usually, or like Russia Ukraine. I'll just Google that, um, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, it, uh, on the silliness. My uh, that's like what my Wi-Fi is. I have a uh, Vladimir Computin, and then the password <laughs> is Ukraine. <laughs> um, I, and I I just uh, all all I know is that everything is fucking terrible all the time and every time i f hear something um that filters its way through like 
like the worst news coverage I feel like that's ever happened in a major conflict in my lifetime. Uh, it's always like extremely horrifyingly bad. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm 33. Uh, I've already seen some shit in my life. Uh, and like the news, the news coverage is usually um a lot more aggressive. Like like I remember like uh. The entire time we were in uh, Afghanistan, uh, even when it was in like like everybody's over it, nobody gives a shit anymore. Nobody has any compassion for our soldiers over there, anything at all anymore, unless they're on TV winning something. Nobody gave a fuck. Uh, they'd still, it was still like the thing that was on the news the most when they had nothing to say about it. And now, like, I hear almost nothing. Yeah, it's kind of weird the the silence around it. Um... Yeah, it's really weird. I, uh, so I've been around a little longer. I'm 44 and I've seen quite a few conflicts. Um, this is, this is definitely a weird one. Like the best coverage came from India. India had the best coverage, particularly India today, which is amazing because they're like a right wing propaganda outlet but they had people on the ground and were doing the most comprehensive coverage of the war. And, um, right wing news media outlets love war though. And it yeah. It was like, if you wanted to get a lot of detail and a lot of input, it was India today. And a lot of people didn't know that. Weird. And that was something that was really interesting. Like when I was watching it on Stardust stream, um, I was, cause she and I were both talking about how, it's wild to think that India today oh, no. is the one doing the best coverage on this because they're so sensationalistic and um and right wing conservative uh you know um Hindu nationalist propaganda focused kind of you know outlet what a phrase and India <laughs> is you know um has a, a strong um economic alliance and military alliance with russia and strong dependency on fertilizer and oil and sure. or um or natural gas actually yeah. and they're and yet they're doing the best ground coverage in ukraine and we were just blown away by it you still had to pay attention to what they were saying and be careful because they would slip a lot of propaganda into there sure but they were doing the best coverage in Ukraine from the Ukraine perspective. It was amazing. Um, well, I don't know if you know this, but I'm an American. And anything that comes out of any country that's not America, um, I I don't see it. And if I see it, um, it's <laughs> bullshit. So that's how this works. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's I'm, probably I'm, why you weren't seeing much about it. Because... You really had to go to other sources. You couldn't rely on on local news, or not local, but you know our, our national news and American and international news to to get the information. It was just so limited. Even streamers, like um, I guess for a long time, I just sort of thought to myself, like if uh if it's not getting picked up by like uh Destiny or who who the fuck else uh, that I watch a lot, like right before uh. That, like if if like the streamers that I watch weren't really talking about it a lot, uh, it probably wasn't that big of a deal. But like, even the stuff that they're talking about, it always seemed like the more mundane, uh, like like the same stuff I already knew, kind of things. Um, See, like nothing you have to be new. Watching Stardust and me. That's what you need to do. <laughs> it's true, and I think part. I remember I turned on Stardust stream when uh, she was doing it, but I think I was just like. Uh, weirded out i was like there's literally not a single person talking about animal dicks here this is weird is this stardust <laughs> stream i don't know what's happening um so i think i was just uh like i wasn't like disappointed or anything i think i was just like um i was just, like confused i didn't uh i thought maybe some i like came into the middle of uh like something i don't know it was just really weird and i didn't really understand so like okay I guess Stardust isn't like really doing like a thing right now. Uh, I don't know. I I like vaguely understood uh, that she was talking about Ukraine, but I 
it just sort of went over my head. Like I said, it wasn't, nobody else was telling me that something uh, uh, interesting or new was happening. So like, uh, even in, like, I like Stardust, but I didn't, why did I want to hear Stardust say like the same things? But like, not, you're with the kind of context you're providing me, it makes a lot of sense that um, that's why it was worth covering because other people weren't. Yeah. And the two of us had honestly the most comprehensive coverage of the conflict. Um, like everybody who wanted to, like my numbers were really high because of that. Cause everybody who wanted to learn about the Ukraine conflict were coming over to my stream, oftentimes from Stardust when she would end stream. And uh, it was, yeah, it was a pretty big draw. I was easily pushing like a hundred uh, viewers. Hell yeah. Uh, it was, my steady state was like 50 viewers, but oftentimes I was at over 100 because of that coverage. And we were the only two people who were doing comprehensive coverage of that conflict. That's so weird to me. Uh, I, th I I don't know. I can't even speculate because uh, I, I know that the, whatever the actual reason is that it's like so convoluted that um, I'm not going to even start. I can think of like 10 reasons why it would be that way. And I don't, I don't know how to connect all those dots, to be perfectly honest. Um, because yeah. I haven't gotten any fucking coverage. Uh, but now I know where to go. Is it still going? Are you guys still covering it? I haven't been streaming. And Stardust hasn't... Uh, she's come back to it occasionally, here and there, but not consistently. It's just been sort of in this steady attrition state for a while. So there's not a lot to cover. Is this your first stream in a while? Well, I'm not even streaming right now. Oh, sorry. Is this your first time being on a stream in a while? No. Every once in a while, I hop onto someone else's stream to talk. Sometimes make guest appearances or whatever. Okay, cool. But like, God, um, I hope you didn't uh, uh, feel any pressure or anything. I got um, no. Nah. I I got uh somebody in the future. I I don't like to say who I'm talking to if we haven't hammered out of time and stuff. But I know they haven't streamed in a while and uh. It's it's weird. So can I ask you then too? Uh, why, if, if you if you've been taking time off and like, I'm sure you didn't even, uh, you've never heard of me before unless you're like an avid watcher of Mr. Girl's stream and you read the chat. Um, wh why why'd you say yeah? Well, I've definitely seen your name, but I couldn't pin down where it was Hell from. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't like I didn't remember where I had seen your name before Fair. when you reached out to me. It, uh, instantly I knew it and I'd seen you in Twitter I think and I know I had definitely seen you in a stream chat somewhere but I couldn't pin down where exactly so uh, and then when you when I read through you know what you wrote up about what you were doing I was like yeah okay this sounds like it's all right I, I'm usually pretty easy going about going onto people's streams mm -hmm. even if I haven't really heard of them I usually will just kind of feel them out a bit to see, you know, I kind of read some signals from them to see what kind of person they are. And cause like sometimes you get like the occasional griper type person who wants to like get you on and mock you. you know, Is or that something what griper like that. means? I hear the word thrown around all the time and I haven't uh, urban dictionary that one. Gripers are basically followers of Nick Fuentes followers of the America first movement. Gotcha. And it's their, self-assigned name based on their mascot which is like a, a slightly different version of the pepe frog oh and good god they're i mean i they're don't like pepe really... as much as the next guy but yeah so it's a weird thing to co-op i'm a little um kind of known you know among gripers because of my earlier affiliation with politically provoked yeah. And back in their early days, I was actually kind of chill with them and was trying to support them. But when they started moving in this far right direction and kind of like creating a platform that was effectively just a, a bastion of, of very far right ideology, I started distancing myself from them and I had a lot of criticisms for them. And there was a lot of really blatant anti Semitism and like, um, a lot of big violence in their discord stuff. and so i i criticized them for it and it got it ended up becoming a big heated conflict between Brittany and me that's her name it, i was gonna ask you yeah and it became this sort of 
prolonged conflict. I mostly stayed disengaged, but they were pretty pissed off about me. And there was some stuff that was going on in their community that was like stirring up rumors about me and stuff. And, um, and so I had all this attention on me from Groypers because their community was largely a Groyper community. Sure. Um, and... I thought she was left wing. Wasn't yeah, that the originally deal? she was kind of like a lib left kind of Bernie crat. Yeah, that's and, what I thought. Uh, but she, her positions have moved <laughs> a little bit, and she's also just more fostered a right wing platform, despite her beliefs. She's fostered money, a right wing huh? platform. It's it's obviously she's found a niche and yeah. it works for her. So, um. Yeah, so there was a bit of a conflict, and a Get lot it. of her Groyper audience were focused on me for a long time. So every once in a while, there's like I find someone who's like kind of looking to bait me into something, and it turns out that they're like a far right Groyper type looking to just kind of you know get their blood, right? So well, that's not I'll me. Feel these things out, like check them out, look at their profile, and look at what their interactions are, and make a decision. Ah, if you he, look, he, you he know, if stalking, at initial huh? plants, you look fine. I'll just, I'll probably just say yes because I think I, I like the idea of I, um, I wish a lot of these streamers and bigger personalities would make more appearances on small channels. You know, Same. and I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm just only going to the big channel. I'd like sure. to, to just go to any channel and, you know, just kind of because that's the thing that the smaller streamer always hopes for is to get somebody who's well known and popular onto their channel. And I remember doing that when I was streaming a lot, really wanting that, like, oh, if I can, you know, if this person would ever show up on my channel, this would be so awesome, you know, but um, people get to a certain point and it's like they've moved beyond that. And now they only want to associate with other big names. Yeah, and, I know the the spiral. You end up yeah, like Vouch. So, yeah, and I don't. That's I don't ever want to be that. So no matter what, I want to be always hitting up you know small streams and stuff. It's one of the things I like about Doobie. He does that as well. Like he'll jump on to a brand new streamer stream. He did that with Lorenzo, who's a Nefarious P or Nefarious Politics and Philosophy. He did that with him when he first started streaming, and that was really awesome. I was I was really happy that he did that for. For Lorenzo, and I think that's something that we should all do. You know, we shouldn't get too too focused on shooting up, right? And should all kind of like just be lifting each other up mutually. I mean, I I always think that it's really cool when people do. I um, shit, uh. Yeah, it's it's really hard to uh, like I reached out to uh, a lot of people for this project because um, it's important to me. And like you said, um, like being a smaller streamer and wanting to get people on your channel, like I very lazily streamed for a couple of years. Didn't really uh, I didn't really have any reason to like care about it. Uh, it's just like um, like this is cool. This is fun. Um, and I. I got a little inspired to take it more seriously um, by uh, watching uh, a friend of mine, Key of Weird, I think he's criminally underrated. His streams are, he's the second, he, he's a small streamer and he's the second most watched streamer that I watch. I only met him through his streams uh, and I consider him to be uh, a really good friend. I talk to him and the community there more than like anybody else. and. Uh, when I, I talked about doing this project that I'm working on, and he was like, uh, like super, 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 like, yeah, man, you should absolutely be doing that. And uh, I said, okay, so I started working on it, and I uh, realized that I wanted to shift it from like how I think about, like why I love Mr. Grill's content. And I was like, well, it's not just uh, about me. Like when I think about what I'm really trying to talk about, it's why uh, so many people do, why he's uh, like able to be bulletproof and nothing gets to him, uh, like no nothing nothing gets through. Uh, like he's like uncancelable. Uh, uh, looks so away from the Twitch logo. On the outs, 
He's certainly on the outs with Destiny's community right now. <laughs> I, I came from Destiny's community. Um, yeah. But I guess the idea is that, uh, to me, is that, yeah, but he's still growing, too. I, I watch every stream. He's not, like, he's not dipping in numbers. I see new people showing up all the time. Yeah. Uh, and it's anybody else would have been canceled five times over saying uh the things that he said especially the way that he says them and so like when i've reached out to some people like uh when you said yeah when i got jimmy uh who's literally never talked to anybody for when baby baby put my jimmy interview on the announcements on mr girl's discord it was insane to me and uh i kind of had a moment where i realized like I guess the things that I thought about when I like I would like to stream, uh, it'd be cool to like stream more, uh, and it'd be more involved with it. Um, that would have been something I'd have been really excited for, for, for but for a totally different reason. Um, I really focus. I like. I, I guess I'm really excited um, to talk to the people that I have so far in you because I think you're like this is really gonna help me make the thing that I have in my head uh, the way that I want it to be. Mm -hmm. um because i i your your opinion uh about uh mr girl and the things that i just mentioned uh are like invaluable to like uh the narrative of like how he's able to do the things that i just listed off and uh it's crazy to me that uh you were just like yeah uh, i can i can come and talk to you about this that that was tremendous but um i i guess like I'm not, I don't think about it like I'm, I'm happy for me. That's one of the things that I talked to my therapist about. Uh, she says, why do you want to do this? It's like, I really just want to, I want to make this video. Um, and I, uh, and I, I really like talk to people. Like, I guess I get to do the thing that I really want to do. Um, but I get to do it by doing something I really love doing. This is just talking to people. I and fucking never stop talking ever. My wife is a saint. She puts up with it. Uh, and I get to talk to interesting people. Uh, yeah. And so I, I guess I understand the idea of like um, uh, being a little streamer and like uh, so usually when I would stream like just doing whatever I'd look at like um, like my viewer numbers and stuff and like I in in any of these interviews that I've done I'm not looking over at that like I miss chat because I'm just really focused on the person that I'm talking to. Um, I'm playing Magic while I'm talking to you, and I fucked up like ten times this game. Cause I'm so glad. Like I, I won like three turns ago, and I'm I, I lost. Like I should have won at least three turns ago. I absolutely lost this game. I'm conceding. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just I'm really enjoying uh, the process and working what I'm working on, and I'm so grateful that uh, everybody who said yes. I'm so grateful. Like I I, I legitimately would have been uh. I don't know how I could have talked about the transal culture arc that Mr. Phil had if I didn't talk to you. Like, you're, uh, you're the first person I think about when I think of, uh, like, that whole arc that he did. Um, cause you're the, like, out of, on all the panels, you're, you're the cool one. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you. You're welcome. You, I, I think what I said to you, too, is, like, you took, uh, I know you got shit from your community uh, for talking yeah. to him, and yeah. <laughs> that's awesome uh, to me because I I know it's not like you're like rolling in Bausch and Destiny money where you can just say like fuck you guys I don't care I don't care about my community like you're you're still build like you're building a community and um. And I have to assume that they're pretty loyal. So to do something that would like really piss them off, that means something. That you're making a statement by doing that. Um, yeah, I had a number of people. Well, it wasn't as bad. I didn't get as many unfollows from that as I did from uh, from other things. Yeah. But that one, there were some. Most people hung on, but a few unfollowed, from what I remember. Um, you know what's funny is for you to bring that up that's the thing that gets brought up the most when I, so I do this whole thing where I like just I'll show up to somebody's discord and I'll just hang out on VC sometimes right just to kind of get a feel for that community and hang out with them and meet the people and stuff 
the most common things that people bring up is that panel, the transfer culture panel, and they always have questions for me about it. Um, I was in Destiny's Discord a couple yeah. weeks ago hanging out in there. Mm -hmm. Multiple people showed up on the voice chat specifically asking <laughs> me about the transfer, transfer culture panel and stuff. And for whatever reason, that's the one that stands out the most, which, which is funny because like Destiny's community was most bothered by the an earlier panel that that he and I were on with the blackface one, right? That was uh, where he had the blackface suggestion for dealing yeah. with dysphoria. Like that's Destiny's community were actually angry with him over that and demanded that he apologize. It's for it. so funny um, that you say that. I have a but, I have a big thing dedicated to that I want to ask you about. Go on, uh, go on. But but yeah, but uh, but when I jump on to Destiny's voice chats. What everybody jumps in to ask me about is the transfer culture panel. That's the one they all want to ask me questions about. So, or talk to me about. For whatever reason, that one just really stands out for a lot of people. More even like the, I always figured the one that would stand out the most was the original pedophilia one for back in December, right? I always thought that would be the one that gets everybody jumping at the chomping at the bit to talk to me on VC, but well, nobody really cares about that one. I think the reason why it stands out to me um, is because I know bombshell here, you're trans. And there is that. And I think that the general perception, uh, which I don't agree with, is that Mr. Girl is uh, very anti trans, um, which I don't think is the case, but I get that perception from a lot of people in the trans community that he's doing like terrible things um and maybe some of the things might have some negative impact i don't know i'm not well i'm non-binary i don't consider myself having a trans experience by any stretch um my kid is trans uh they came out to me four or five months ago I don't, i'm not really keeping track um and i know that my kid would get uncomfortable uh, and I, yeah, it was like right around the transal culture panels. Uh, I noticed that my kid didn't really like the uh, the Mr. Girl things that I had on because I don't always wear my headset. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm sorry that you don't like it. I was like, you don't you don't have to listen to it, or you can tell me to turn it down. And he just kind of like, no, oh, it's fine. I'm like, okay. And I think it was right around that time that he came out. Um, and. Uh, I think that that's kind of like my big indicator that like well maybe maybe it's uh may, maybe it's not as um not hurtful uh to hear that stuff as I might have assumed that it was just because I agree with some of the stuff. I would say I'm probably like 50/50 with Mr. Girl. Maybe maybe 60/40 with Mr. Girl on the things that he says um mm -hmm. about uh trans culture trans ideology and trans people but i i can at least say too that um when i think he's wrong i think he's wrong for the best reasons i've ever heard somebody be wrong about it before um i've heard a lot of people say um like horribly wrong things in my life about um religion sexuality um gender identities and they almost always have like a, a non-reason it's either like um like my religion says, and like, your religion doesn't fucking say what you just said, I promise. Uh, I studied theology for like 10 years. Like, I promise it doesn't mm -hmm. say that. Uh, or they just make up something that doesn't make sense. Um, at least I believe that he believes the things that he's saying that he's drawing his conclusions from. And that at least he's thought about it. Um, which is kind of like, um, he said, like, I source my own meat, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, even if I disagree with you eating animals, um, I think that if you're going to do it, you're doing it the most respectable way that I could think of. Does that yeah, make sense? Fair. Yeah. Um, Good comparison. And I think that even though I would disagree with uh, some of the things that he says, um, like broadly speaking, trans topics, uh, or the same way that I would disagree with, uh, take it easy, Cam, uh, that I agree with, uh, uh, like just eating meat in general. Um, I, I can't be, uh, how would I word that? I, I'm not nearly as uh, upset. I think intentions matter. I think that you both mean really well when you're doing something that I don't like. Hmm. 
Um, and I think that most people that um, have the same end result uh, as like uh, like you eating meat or him giving uh, takes that I don't agree with that um, have at least some impact on my life and the people that I care about. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say this the wrong way, uh, and not. Well, I don't want to say it in the wrong way and not say well, how, what I really mean. You know. Yeah. Um, um. I know I lost it. My bad. But you, the. Yeah. I guess I think that some of the things he says might be harmful. I'm not 100% sure, because um, I don't know other people's experiences. Well, I, I would say at least people feel like it is, and I don't love that. But um, I, I like it a lot less when somebody is deliberately making people feel bad and coming from a place of hate. I don't. I never mind when people are wrong. Uh, I mind when people are shitty. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I, most people that know me would say I'm a really nice guy, and I'm really hard to make uh, angry. The easiest way for somebody to make me angry is to try to make me angry. Like you want, you want to make me into a ugly person. That mm -hmm. that that's what makes me upset. Um, and I I guess I don't get that. Uh, I never got that from any of the stuff that Mr. Grill was laying down. And in fact, it seemed like he took a a good chunk of time to explain that like I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Um, and uh, it seemed like he had the intention that he really hoped that people understood that. Like, I gotta say what I gotta say. I really hope it doesn't bother you. That's not my intention. I don't think that you're bad. I don't think that you're wrong. Uh, and I never heard anybody do that. Everybody that uh, says uh, things that I would categorize as um, the potential for being harmful, uh, it seemed like they almost revel in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh i i guess it kind of goes into uh a question that i had written down that's why did you want to go on to his panel uh why did you want to go on to the transal culture panel actually it, the way it came up was kind of interesting so i had actually just made a video or kind of cobbled together some slightly older footage from a couple months earlier and made it into a more comprehensive video that talked about weaponizing a marginalized status and how I've observed it as being a growing problem in the online trans community. And sure. I actually showed it to him. And then oh. he showed me the video that he was making, which he had already labeled it transal culture. It wasn't even public yet. It was actually unlisted. Mm -hmm. And... Um, or I think it was, maybe it was public. I forget, but he sent it to me and, and I teased him. And I said, transal culture, really? I was like, you do realize transal is already slang for a trans incel, right? <laughs> I didn't like, know that. Yeah. He's like, oh, fuck. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? I was like, you didn't tell me. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't ask me. <laughs> right. So, uh, so he went live with it, Yeah, you know, when it was. He had already, well, it didn't matter because he had already crafted the video and like the intro and everything was trans culture and it had all this, you know, stuff in it that was about trans culture. So, um, so it was because of that interaction in DMs that he actually asked me if I would go on a panel. Okay. And he, and that he would have Stardust host. Or, well, at the time, he didn't know who was going to host it. He did, said he would have somebody else host it and then, um, have me on. And so, um, yeah, and I'm the one who got Polly on there as well because he wanted another trans person on. Hell yeah! So he wanted one that didn't agree with him as much. I didn't know the so, lore went so deep. I feel like yeah. um, I, I I keep feeling like I'm uh, like finding all this little hidden lore with everybody that I talk to. This is uh, I would have never guessed. Yeah. Now, every every time you say something, I swear to God, you get like at minimum at minimum ten percent cooler. <laughs> um for real um yeah uh, there's a little bit of lore there what's funny though like because i one of the most common things i run into is people usually people who are opposed to me 
or have a problem with me saying that I'm friends with Mr. Girl, it can certainly that that impression can be painted because of our interactions and because of that thing that I told you. We actually rarely interact in DMs. It's like mm-hmm. almost never. We just kind of run into each other like on panels or or like he invites me onto a panel or I invite him onto a panel. But I think we've had maybe maybe what are we now? Like maybe six panels in total. Which isn't many when you consider how many panels we've done. And well, Mr. Bill doesn't do a lot of panels. And then well he's done he's done he's done a fair amount. And he's also done like the small little like threesome panels, right? Oh but, do you want to count this? Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So you got me then. um yeah, and then you add up how many panels I've done. Which yeah, is a yeah. Lot. So uh really like from my perspective, we are friendly and you know, but we rarely interact. But oh. if you just get these little snippets of like us being friendly together on streams and the way that we kind of banter with each other. I assumed you guys then, were closer. Yeah, people think that we're a lot closer than we are. And I like the guy. Um, but we just don't know each Me other too. that well. So could could we end up being friends? There's a chance. I do I I do like the guy. But it's it's kind of funny. It's like so many people will come to me and like, why are you friends with Mr. Girl? <laughs> Oh. I get that all the time. So, um, and then I go and give you this little tidbit of this exchange we had in DMs that, you know, and how it played out. That's just going to make it even worse. Everybody's going to be like, see, I told you they're friends. Well, like, they're know. even joking in DMs. <laughs> now, now, you, well, now you have like a bibliography reference to say, no, you can look at Elder Drowsy's stream. I ran through the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Get off my ass, motherfucker. All right. I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But it's it is funny just to like the the view because it was kind of based on what you're saying, how you're like learning more and more as you yeah. talk to people. It's funny how the perception is from the outside. Yeah. Um a lot of people kind of like they have to frame in a lot of missing information. And it paints a very interesting picture. Like it paints a picture that's not at all like what's going on. And then as you as you talk to someone and they tell you about like how things play out, you learn all these other pieces that are going on that totally change the picture of it. And it's it's an interesting experience to like because I so for years I was more just a viewer. And I was also a moderator and I didn't really have much to do with the scene other than just, I moderated for a couple of channels and I was mostly just, you know, a viewer of of specific channels. Um, Once I started getting involved in the whole space and interacting with people and talking with them and going onto streams and talking to them and putting together panels and stuff, it was like it, there's so much more going on. It's just business. Sure. And you start to realize, you look back and you realize how different things looked from the outside when you were just a regular viewer versus now. There's like all these business relationships going on and all these interactions and all these DMs and stuff. And it's like a it's like a system, you know, and it just there's so much more than what people see. I mean, <laughs> I it's think just I acknowledge very different. That. It's very business like. But yeah. I think it's really easy for me to understand that there's a big business element to it. Um, I yeah. think that maybe I imagined there being something more friendly with you and Mr. Girl because I, he, he's really vocal about not wanting things to be just business between, uh, well, like particularly him and Destiny. <laughs> but, That's um, true. But yeah. uh, un- unlike a lot of streamers, uh, he does not hide his emotions when he's on stream it's very easy to read uh i think it was last night i i told a story i watched him uh talking to a woman who uh it's like a foundation that helps pedophiles and when she was talking to him about what they do because he's pretty combative with her she said that you're not we're sometimes we're the first uh people to tell a person like uh you're safe here you're okay, we're not here to judge you. 
you're not a monster. I, I just, like, the look on his face, um, uh, like, really got to me, and my wife was in bed next to me, and, uh, she says, do you have any idea how that feels? And I said out loud to my wife that she's doing it for him right now, and he said, you're doing it for me right now, so I kind of got some, uh, validation that he's not bullshitting when he says, you know, like, um, that, like, when he, how he expresses that he's being emotionally honest. Yeah. Um, so I guess when I see that kind of banter, like, um, I'm surprised to find out that you guys aren't friends, but you guys have phenomenal chemistry then. Yeah. It's, it's funny too, because, um, people talk about that. Like, um, I Not didn't really think, with them. I didn't really think all that much about it until somebody, well, actually when I was hanging out in Chud Logic's um voice chat like a couple months ago and people were talking in there about how they're hoping that stardust and mr girl and me will show up on chud logic's stream again mm -hmm. because we've done that a few times right yeah. and for whatever reason that people like the interaction and multiple times i've had people bring that up that there's a certain chemistry between Mr. Girl and Stardust and me and Chud Logic, and it it just works. Yeah. And and so like the Transal Culture panel had all four of us, and we've also been on Chud Logic stream on three separate occasions. But then also there was the two hours of hate, where at the very end he brought me back on with Stardust, uh, to you know to talk to Mr. Girl, and it happened again. It's like every time people say that they really like the the dynamic between the four of us. So it you know hearing it more and more, I'm realizing yeah, I guess we do have sort of there's a chemistry there, and it works. And it's funny because I know I frustrate him. <laughs> He's told me about it. I think he likes. He that. says that I'm, he says I'm passive aggressive too, which I'm not sure how it is that I'm passive aggressive. He must be reading something into what I'm doing that isn't actually there. As far as I can tell, I'm not being passive aggressive, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just not aware of what I'm doing. But not like I can does. tell that I frustrated him. He uh -huh. gets really riled up sometimes, and yet it doesn't ruffle my feathers. Like, uh, you know, I'll laugh it off, right? I'm really easygoing about it, and for yeah. whatever reason, in the end, it works. But like during the Transal Culture panel, he's like melting down, <laughs> and he's just going like hands on his face and all animated and everything, and I'm laughing my ass off. I can't stop laughing. And so it's funny the way that interaction works because I'm I'm not pissed off, but he's clearly frustrated. Yet he can. <laughs> He can recover himself and be lighthearted about it afterward. Yeah. <laughs> it's like somehow that interaction just works itself out. And people seem to think it's interesting and see that, like you're saying, that it's, it's a good chemistry. So I, I would say it absolutely is. Um, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to, uh, to watch it all go down. Uh, it's, it's not... certainly healthier than than the mix Vivian and Zonia uh, interactions. I don't really miss those. Those got a lot of attention too, but for unhealthy reasons. Right. I, the... the Mr. Girl Zonia interactions are definitely healthier and friendlier. Um, maybe you could fresh, refresh my memory. I I might know what you're talking about. Um, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little self conscious if I'm dead ass wrong. Can you refresh my memory on that? Uh, Vivian is an old clash of mine uh, from, like, we clashed multiple times in November and December as well as early January. And oh, I, we kind of patched things track. up and started getting along. But then she things fell apart and she blocked me and we haven't interacted and she doesn't go on to prime's panels anymore what, what, was, so, what were you guys clashing about i we clashed about a bunch of things we clashed about anti-fascism we clashed about stochastic terrorism by like left-wing stochastic terrorism potentially mm -hmm. fostered by her we clashed on xenogenders and uh yes. 
and uh, a number of things. Okay. Yeah. Clashed oh. on gender identity stuff. Yeah, yeah, I um supposed to talk to somebody like two months ago about uh somebody somebody told me that uh non binary isn't a real thing. And I said that's pretty stupid to say. And uh mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to argue with you in somebody's uh, YouTube chat, but you can talk to me about it. Um, I don't know. I, the I, sheriff of of Tiltover, I think that is, knows who Vivian is. <laughs> oh God, Vivian! Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> um, that's oh yeah, that's a that's a new problem. Um, yeah, it's like there's there are certain clashes that are like healthy and unhealthy, and I see like the Vivian ones, even though people love them. People absolutely loved the clashes between the two of us, and like Prime's numbers would go up, and Chud Logic's numbers would go up whenever we were clashing. But um, but it's just not a healthy one. And then there's like the clashes with Mr. Girl, which are much more cordial, right? And they're more they're friendlier, and there's more of a, a give and take, and uh, and they and they recover in the end, right? It's okay to disagree. Yeah, they're a healthier kind of disagreement and a healthier kind of clash that still, you know, get people interested. So uh, I'm sitting there thinking about like my famous clashes. I'm like, I, I really prefer the Mr. Girl ones over the old Vivian ones. Yeah, I don't think I like it a whole lot um, when uh, when people get real nasty with each other instead of real nasty about the thing they're talking. I like when people get real nasty about the subject. And they get real worked mm -hmm. up about that. I like seeing that kind of passion. But I think when um when people get really ugly with each other, um, and I know I'm in the minority here, uh, but that that I don't know. It always makes me a little bit sad. Uh, but I'm I'm a I'm a sensitive person. Um. Mm -hmm. So wow, you are a phenomenal person to talk to. Uh, I have talked to you for quite some time, and I barely asked you any of my stuff. You're Zonia, I'm. Wait a minute. Am I even? I'm. If I'm not, I'm subscribing to your channel, right? Now. You're <laughs> fucking awesome. I. Oh, thanks. I. I wish. I wish I got to see more of uh, like just uh, information about you in the past because you're super interesting. Uh, I have. I have a a Mr. Grill question written down here, but I. Sure. I meant to ask you this a little while ago. Can I um, I. I can I give you my uh. Like probably the the hottest uh, trans take I can because I it, before I knew you weren't going to be on camera I was going to say something to you because um, you always look nice on stream and I was going to say uh, oh I'm sorry may I may I phrase it as a question that I just went ahead of myself oh yeah yeah um, you always look so nice when you're on camera and I was going to say Zonia you look very nice today because I expected that you would uh, and then I was going to say like. My favorite thing about trans women is that they never get upset if I um, just say you look nice today. Um, I always get like a really nice reception. Like I'm not gonna say it's somebody who looks like shit. I don't care. I'm not saying it because uh, <laughs> they're trans, but like it's nice to be able to. Uh, and I don't necessarily think any woman's gonna get upset with me when I say it either, because um, like it's I think that I'm a pretty non-threatening person. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I think I don't it's better feel... received by trans women overall because of the we often we appreciate when someone kind of sees us as being you know it depends on the trans woman obviously but a lot of us do appreciate when like a guy compliments us and I think it's it's a little less well received these days with cis women because there's been a bit of a cultural shift away from seeking validation through or being validated through aesthetics sure yeah um, whereas with trans that. women it's there's still so, a lot of value in that for a lot of us not for all of us but for a lot of us yeah and and i under i understand uh where cis women come from with that too and i don't think i've ever said it to somebody who wasn't going to receive it well but i i think that um it's just really nice that if i have that thought um i i feel like uh i don't feel like um, like anybody in the room is gonna uh, pull the gun out from behind their back if I compliment uh, a trans woman on how they look, and it's I guess it just I like being nice to people and I like saying nice things, um, mm -hmm. 
and I know that um, I, I really appreciate it when somebody tells me, like I just tried trying to dress nicer, and when somebody tells me they like my shoes or uh, that I look really good today, it's really nice, and I like to you know throw that back to people. Um, so I that's that's probably the um, the the one thing that I like personally uh, uh, get to uh, indulge in uh, with trans women that seems like uh i i never uh, I, I guess i feel i feel a little bit easier to uh express uh how i'm thinking uh than i would in a, a fully cis setting mm -hmm. and it's it's nice uh but like i said to you like uh i thought you were uh fuck jennifer carpenter earlier yeah, you always you always look really good for all your streams. Um, I don't know who Jennifer Carpenter is. You ever watch Dexter? <laughs> yeah, the sister. Deb. Yeah, in that oh. in your Twitter thing, I thought you were Dub. I had to look up her name because I don't <laughs> know names of anybody ever. Uh, like I can remember streamer names because they're all like well, like weird and unique, but um, I can't uh, I can't remember people's names to save my fucking life. Um, oh. so the uh, oh, and actually. I said that too. I remember there was a really shitty post somebody had. Uh, says it was like they were somebody was responding to. We can always tell, and uh, this uh, woman put a picture of herself. Said, oh, "Really, could you tell?" And somebody said, "A hundred percent, or yeah, it, it, uh, but a hundred percent for sure." If I spent five seconds on your profile, and I reread it twice. I was like, "You're fucking lying! Like, why are you? Why are you even like?" First of all, why this? are you harassing this person? Uh, no, uh, a trans woman posted a post on Twitter today when I was at work, and I was like, and I was like eating lunch or something. So I had to have like one phone on my hand, and somebody was like, uh, being shitty to uh, a trans woman who was like, uh, you can't always tell. It was like what the thing that she was trying to say is, or and her post, and the, the person who responded was like, I can totally tell with you, and I was like, first of all. You're full of shit. Second of all, if they think that, why bother saying it? But I, I even had to like look back twice. Like, like you're you're lying to make this person feel bad. Um, why? And I was just like, I don't, I don't believe you. And like, this chick's hot as hell. Like, I had a double take. I would have never known. You didn't know. Stop it. Uh, like, aside from the fact of if it should even matter or not. Like, right. People on Twitter suck that much. Like, I'm, I'm gonna come on here and lie to make you feel bad. Um, yeah. in Twitter's, I've had Twitter for like probably 12 years or something, but I just use it more to try to, um, uh, engage with my project. And I guess I didn't realize, um, you hear a lot about how, um, crazy people on the left are on Twitter, but I didn't, I don't hear a lot about how shitty and trolly, um, people that aren't really like that aren't on the left or like that aren't there for politics. They're just there to be fucking rude as shit to people. It's, it's kind of new to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how good it's going to be for me. I mean, I sometimes get in on the shit posting, but at least I do more than just shit posting. <laughs> um, Speaking of Twitter, I just saw that um, Who Thanks it must be watching your stream because they retweeted what I sent out about um, hanging out on your stream and talking to you, and they said famous friend of Mr. Girl Zonia. <laughs> so they're clearly watching this. A good one. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Um and Roy or uh, Ray Far Force says uh, I know I Ray Force. Own, I hope you own her with facts and logic. <laughs> I did see that. Ray Force is um like I just said I'm surprised at how many trolls. Ray Force is uh, such a high caliber of troll that I can't help but respect <laughs> him. I can't scroll two fucking inches on my Twitter ever without seeing him. Uh, I know him, uh, like not in person. But he's in a community that I'm in, and uh, he is, uh, uh, he, he's like Loki. He's like a lovable devil. Like, he doesn't, like, he says a lot of shitty things that he doesn't mean at all, just to stir shit up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's adorable, all the trouble you cause, Ray. Um, like, if, if, he, if, he, if, if he caught anybody saying in our... Uh, our little group that we hang out in, any of the stuff that he put on Twitter, he'd be jumping down our throats. Uh, he just likes being bad. Uh, what did he say? Yeah. 
Um, let's see. So you were I'll bring um, that up later, Ray. I don't want to read all your shit. What was hey, what? the last question we were on? Um. Oh yeah, I was. I I gave you uh, my my hot take beforehand. I was gonna. My my next question here is uh. If if you could explain who Mr. Girl is to people as short as possible, like how how would you describe him? Just trying to get an idea of like how you view Max. Mr. Girl, aka or Max, aka Mr. Girl. Max is a he is a person who sees the world through a lens that is avoiding popular filters popular filters being like political correctness avoiding <clears throat> certain topics because of the the taboo of them so he wants to see the the world through eyes that are unfettered and he has a provocateur approach to presenting his views and how it is that he wants to um, break people out of the cycle of viewing the world through these popular filters. His, I wouldn't say that he successfully achieves seeing the world um, unfettered. I would say that in his attempt to see the world unfettered, yeah, he binds himself to other types of chains and other filters. Kind of like like I sort of agree with Erudite, who um, she says that he tries to mind read, and is overconfident in his ability to mind read. I do agree with her on that. When she said it, it was something I had already been thinking, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the chains or filters that he's adopted or you know become bound to in his attempt to become unfettered and unfiltered. Because what he tries to do when he talks to people, his his perspective is. Everybody's seeing things through this these veils, you know, that are taboo and political correctness and avoiding certain <laughs> topics. And he knows what it's like to be to come from that. He even did a whole you know story about you know when I learned to stop giving or stop. Um, what was How it? How I became a people pleaser. People pleaser. How That's I became my favorite a people video. pleaser. Yeah, like he has, he has a whole video on extracting himself from that yoke and so he sort of empathizes with the fact that everybody else has that yoke and it has that veiled perspective of the world and he wants people to pull that veil back but the yeah. problem is that he sort of bound himself to this as erudite puts it, this mind reading where he becomes overconfident in thinking that he understands that people are like not being truthful either with themselves or with him when they're giving their perspective and he isn't always accurate about that so he's got sort of this overconfidence at the same time that i think kind of gets in the way because like there are times where he's confronted me i'm a very direct person sure. and i don't tend to like i don't tend to 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 um adjust the way it is that i think about things just to please people I'll be pretty direct and I'll bite bullets that most people won't bite. And oftentimes it can get me into trouble. It does. <laughs> so, um, so I'm a very direct person like that. And there were times where he's, he had confronted me and said, you're lying to me. And I'm like, no, I'm not lying to you, dude. Uh, I'm being very direct. So it's kind of like a failed mind read. And, uh, but it's, it's all from a, a place of empathy and my perspective of him, again, coming from that perspective of having been the chained people pleaser and recognizing that that's how most of the world, most of our society, particularly Western society, is sort of, well, not even just Western society, even Eastern society, is designed to be, which is to like to be polite and to not say certain things that will offend pe certain people and to tailor your words and, and view things through these the filter of taboo and avoid certain subjects. So he's I empathizing with the fact that we're all like that. I'm from the Midwest. I am the I live in the epitome of that shit. Yeah. Oh my have you, have you ever been to the Midwest? I have, yeah. 
Uh, it takes a half hour. Like, it's not a joke that it really takes you a half hour to leave because it feels rude to just walk out the door. <laughs> yeah, and, and so the, his motives for doing it, I think, are noble. Um, I don't see it as malicious. I don't see it as vindictive or anything. His failed attempts at, as Erudite calls it, mind reading, I don't see those as being, um, you know, if they get in the way of his ability to communicate with some people, but I don't see them as a particularly big negative because of the fact that it comes from a, a good place. It comes from a, hey, I was like you. I think you're, you know, veiling and in speaking through a filter. I want you to to strip that filter away and that veil away and speak to me more, more directly. So, so, um, so I think it comes from a good place. So if I, the, the way that I think of this, um, like the mind reading that you're talking about, uh, I have two ideas about it and I want to be really clear. I don't think I've had to say this in any of the other, uh, interviews that I've done so far is that, um, you know, this is my project that I'm working on, and I don't. Uh, I told Jimmy once too. He said, "I don't know if I want Mr. Real to say that." I said, "Well, good thing you're not on his stream then." Uh, <laughs> but the one thing that I will 100% throughout this do my very best to respect to the best of my capacity is that I will not try to defend Mr. Grill. If I think mm -hmm. that you say something uh, that is, I think is wrong that he would argue for. That's not my intent. I can only say what I think if it happens to align, then it does, but I'm not going to try to mind read Mr. Girl at all and try to say, well, this is what's happening. I can just tell you what I think. Um, so one of the things, uh, about the mind reading, I think everybody does that. Uh, we just don't always tell the other people. Um, I think that when we're interacting with people, we're always kind of guessing what they really mean. And it's something that I have a really hard time with because I don't want to do that. It makes me really uncomfortable to do it. Um, I want people to just be more upfront with me. And uh, it's, it's a big problem for me when people don't communicate clearly because I feel like, like, why are you making me uh, figure out what you're saying? Uh, and I don't like it when people try to figure out what I'm saying because like, motherfucker just look up in the dictionary all the words that i just said that's what i'm fucking saying that's that simple i'm very thoughtful when i speak uh and so i think i think everybody does it uh to some degree and then when you talked about the yolk um yeah i think that uh so that how i became a people pleaser video was uh huge for me i love that video uh yeah. from like the like the artistic direction he did it with the, like with like the bad joker makeup and the like the bad uh well I don't, I don't know if like the impression was bad but like it was a little bit cheesy in the beginning and i feel like it added something to it that was that was one of his videos that really uh i was like this is good this is really good work i'm impressed um mm -hmm. but that that whole story that he told i do i do have to wonder if he's trying to save people from that um even if that's not how it works in his head, uh, I don't know how you could be really empathetic towards other people and go through that, think that they're going through that and not try to save them from it. Um, and so maybe maybe that uh, has a part to do with it. And I, I agree 100% that it gets in the way of the conversation progressing. Uh, and sometimes when I, I, I get worried that like uh, we're gonna slip to a space where um, it's it might go sideways because uh, he's not going to let up on it. Uh, I, I try to remind myself too that um, if if the communication's not where Mr. Grill thinks it's going to be, I always think that um, it's not the conversation that he wants to have then, because um, it feels like a lie. But also too, when he I think when he mind reads people a lot too, he says um, uh, I'm not saying that's what you that you actually are lying. I'm just saying that's what I think. Um, and so sometimes he does that. Not yeah. I, well, I, yeah. Uh, Destiny said it really good to. I think he might have been talking to Lauren Southern. It says the problem is, Lauren, that you're not, uh, you're speaking English and he's speaking Mr. Girlinese, and uh, <laughs> like Mr. Girl talks in a way. Like I feel like when he when he says like when he mind reads, like there's a shortcut there that a lot of people aren't seeing. And what he's actually saying is, um, and again, this is just what I, this is just how I perceive it. 
uh, and then he's saying like, I, this is what I think. And it just feels weird to say this is what I think every time he's the one saying it. I think, I think he assumes that people know that. I could be wrong. Uh, but I think that's what's happening there. Um, cause I, I, sometimes I try to express that to people. Uh, like, I, I don't want you to think that I'm telling you that I'm right or that I know, but like, this is what I think. So if you, if you say something to me and what you're saying requires me to, um, believe something that I just told you that I don't believe, uh, that's really frustrating for me. Like, cause you're like saying like, okay, now you have to pretend, uh, like what you just said isn't true so that you can accept the thing that I'm telling you now. And that's, that'd be hard for me. Um, hmm. and I don't, I don't know if, uh, th that he gets caught up a lot on the, um, that's, that, that's just what I think. I don't, I'm not saying that I know that, but then people will try to reiterate a thing that would, uh, in order for him to accept what they're saying, uh, it's like he has to concede like, oh, I don't actually think this then. Uh, because if I think the thing that I said that I just, uh, that I just told you that I think, um, I can't respond in the way that you're basically demanding that I respond. Uh, so I, I uh, those are always frustrating interactions to watch because I feel like neither side's really understanding what the other person's saying. Um, and I, th I think that I understand what, uh, both sides are saying, but maybe I just think that, uh, maybe I just, I'm just mind reading too badly. Uh, all I can tell you is what I think about it. Um, mm -hmm. but I do think that it ends up, uh, negatively a lot, uh, and I think that it's unfortunate. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess, you know what's funny? We actually did cover a couple of these when we were talking. Do, do, you, do you think that um, Max is an ally to the trans cause? Would you put uh, him in that category? Tough, tough one. Yeah, I know. I'm his, coming at you with the hard-hitting ones now. I think his stronger opinionated position kind of alienates his ability to be an ally to the cause. Um, hmm. What does ally mean, he, then, to you? An ally would mean, you know, from his... Okay, so his, his take is that he will respect someone's gender identity, mm -hmm. but he doesn't believe their gender identity and he believes that it all comes down to your inborn set. Yeah. And he wants to abolish gender. And it that is going to effectively alienate his ability to be an ally to the cause because the current direction of trans validity yeah. is in the direction of gender. I understand that, and I think I no. struggle with um, the idea of gender in general. Like, uh, 20 years ago, he probably would have been a little bit more of an ally because everything was still sex-based, the transsexual, yeah. and transitioning, doing a sexual reassignment huh. surgery. He might have been a little bit more um, compatible of an ally. But even so, he says today, you can't effectively change your sex at a fundamental level you're still male if you're born male and female if you're born female that's his position and so there's only so much you can change but under under the hood at a fundamental level you're still physically male yeah, it sounds or, like you know, i would still be it sounds like that statement's just there to explain the difference between what the word sex and gender means well, that gets really complicated because the term gender is constantly evolving and uh, it's sure. moved leagues away from sex, though it's still sex derived. So, sure, uh, yeah, they, they're they very yeah. close to each other. I'll, uh, I'll give you but that. I would say, yeah, I would say his strong position on gender needing, like being irrelevant and shit needing to be abolished. And it tying to sex and that at a fundamental level, you're always male or female, whatever you were born with, kind of alienates his ability to be an ally to the cause because he's inevitably going to clash with a growing portion of the trans community and its push mm -hmm. for its form of validity, which is gender identity. So... I, 
I don't think he would be an ally to the cause. I don't necessarily think that's a, a problem. Not everybody needs to be an ally. It wasn't, right? a, yeah, it wasn't like a loaded question or anything. Like, I didn't expect yeah. a certain answer. Uh, I just this is where wanted I to know kinda, what you think. Well, this is kind of where I get into trouble with a lot of my fellow trans leftists, is that I don't believe that everybody needs to be of like a certain minimum standard for um, being an ally right i yeah i am okay with some people not being allies and still being good people and still associating with them that's just fine with me and that gets me into a lot of trouble with fellow trans leftists and just fellow leftists in general because there's a lot of culture of no you have to you're either with us or against us, right or you're either with the trans community or against the trans community and there's not a lot of nuance or a gray area that's accepted so Max, I'm I am given a lot of shit because of Max's quote transphobia sure. and his quote being an enemy of trans people. So you're gonna get a very different take from me than you're gonna get from a lot of other trans people, which is that no, I don't think he can be an ally, but I'm okay with that and I don't think it's an issue. Well, Zonia, I definitely talked to you because I wanted your takes. Um <laughs> I mean, I could definitely talk to uh, other trans people, but I don't think that they had a... Uh... Well, one, I think that you just had the, the some of the most interesting takes uh, on the panel. But also, um, I don't think that any of them had a, a strong hand in shaping uh, Mr. Girl's career, which I'm really trying to understand. And I guess I'm just finding out that... Uh, uh, I guess I'm happy to be finding out that, like... Um, Everything separate from the things that I've seen you and you're a really interesting person. Well, thank you. So you can consider me well. I ho I hope that your I hope that your uh, solo content is as uh, fun and interesting as you are. I, I haven't really delved in, but I'm gonna. Uh, I'm a pretty low key content creator, but yeah, delve in. I don't know. I guess we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I, I should know. really put more effort into into content creation, honestly. <laughs> A lot of ideas that I have and things that I want to do, I just never do them. It's hard. It's really difficult. It is. Uh, it is. I don't think. I do uh, enjoy doing the memes, though. <laughs> you're, I've got you're a lot of video it on memes. Twitter. You know, I should upload all my video memes to my YouTube just so people can see them. Because on Twitter, like that stuff gets lost. Yeah. Why not do shorts? Yeah. Those seem to work for people. Uh, I mean, it's it's essentially just TikTok on YouTube, but fuck it. You know what I should do? I should make a um, I should make a playlist. Upload them. Do them like unlisted because some of them are a little too spicy, you know. And because uh, I don't want them as part of the algorithm for my channel if they're, <laughs> they're, if they're too antagonistic, right? And um, and then just like make it a memes like video memes playlist of unlisted videos. That way they're easy to find because it's a public playlist. But they're not part of the algorithm because each of them is individually unlisted. Uh, and then you, everybody can see them all. If you do, send me a link, please. Yeah, I'm interested. Um, were Were you a fan of Mr. Girl before you guys like DM'd and end up uh, streaming together? Did you see any of his stuff? No. Well, the only thing that I had seen was I saw his cuties review back in the day because that made huge news, right? And Lucky everybody you. talked about it. I so it. I saw that, and then I, then of course all the other stuff popped up about him, like about his being arrested in college for saying that we should empathize with the school shooter and stuff, like you know all that stuff came up in the wake of his cuties review, kind of resurfacing, and so I learned about that, and then he had the I'm a pedophile. Uh, music video that came out afterward oh god it's so good and i caught that one did you like it i did <laughs> so fucking good and uh, if i was um, on the fence i was sold right then and then i didn't think about him for a long time there's like nothing for a year you know or more and then he did the talk with vosh and i was on that stream i was on vosh's stream uh oh. watching that and I felt like 
like it i didn't know what to think about mr girl at that point that was all that i had known about the guy and i didn't really know what to think about it and i didn't like the way it ended i felt like i had bad vibes about mr girl it rubbed me the wrong way got kind of creeped out about him really but but i also felt that the conversation wasn't given the space it needed to to develop I and think that's so fair. what i did then can you explain what was, you mean by that a little bit well because so Vosh was kind of like Vosh was kind of doing his rhetorical railroading and trying to kind of force Mr. Girl down a path. Yeah, okay, we're on the same page. And I just want to make sure when I agreed with you, I was being genuine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. We're on the same page. And I'm familiar with this with Vosh. Like, I've interviewed Vosh, so I kind of know what it's like to Good deal with his rhetorical way of approaching things. And, um, and I've been watching the guy since the beginning, since he first started streaming. So I'm very you don't have to admit that, to that. With that, <laughs> with that rhetorical approach of his, so I knew it was a like it wasn't exactly a fair representation because the conversation doesn't get to play out more naturally when he's doing that, and then it gets right. heated and contentious, and then Mr. Girl doing his weird thing, you know, kind of plays right into it, and Vosh shuts it down, and it looks really bad. So, you know, then, of course, he talks to Destiny and Stardust. And so I watch both of those. And Stardust is a friend of mine, right? So, yeah. Um, so I'm not I, just that's, watching That's a real her. friendship, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought I, and, I'd have been sad if it wasn't. Because that one seemed yeah. legit. <laughs> so, so I'm watching her stream, not just for the content, but also because I want to see, you know, where my friend goes with this it's a big deal i want to see her take on it right right and get her perspective and then there was all the backlash that happened so during that backlash that was going on over the next couple of days i went and watched a bunch of mr girl's videos including his band videos his, so like i watched what? his band videos what are you, you know, talking the ones about? ones that got banned from YouTube. Oh, see, I thought you were saying he was like in a band. <laughs> and I was like, we've just no. uncovered the mother load of lore here. Holy <laughs> shit. Zonia, we're watching one of these. You got, you can't no. do this to me. Okay. Like I went through his cuties review video. I went through his uh, Tinder date or the you know, <laughs> uh, consent is complicated video. Yeah. I went through a bunch of stuff. Went through his, his other songs as well. It's hard, um, to, it's hard to have just one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and I found um, I can think about whatever I want video or whatever it's good. I that can one, fantasize that's... about whatever I want. Yeah, I can fantasize about whatever I want. That song is so good. Like that one yeah. is my favorite out of all of them. It's, I love it's that tough one. to pick one. Um, I think I told Jimmy I listened to that in a. Do you know what Myers is? I don't know if Myers exists in California. Uh, I know, no. I know, I don't I know think Jimmy's so. more in my side of the country. So it's like a it's like a Kmart or a Walmart kind of store. Uh, okay. And I was standing in line with my wife, and I was like, just sort of found Mr. Girl and seen like the book smarts thing and stuff. I was like, all right, I'm going to listen to this on my earbuds. And uh, the, the first line comes out, and he goes so fucking hard uh, with like, uh, I'm playing Minecraft in a cave looking for miners. Yeah. And I was just like, like I was just kind of like, yeah, you're playing uh, like Minecraft full alert. in a cave looking for diamonds. That's yeah. funny. I'm in that same cave looking for miners. And yeah, so, like, that's that's back straightened, intro. and I look, and I'm like, nobody can hear what I'm listening to right now, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, it was going on, and I'm just like, like shocked, laughing through it, like, wow, like you know, when you hear something for the first time, you like a song, you're not really hearing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, I'm just sort of taking in the lyrics and just like, oh wow, oh wow, all right, and just even the even the chorus, which is uh, so mild to me now. Uh, I was just like, like this is. A, I almost felt like I was doing something bad uh, by listening to it to begin with, and then listening to it in public. Um, it it, it's, it, it kind of had the feel of like. From... Oh, is that better? Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Anyway, uh, it, it felt like I was doing something bad. It was like, um, <laughs> it's like the first time you ever click on like. Uh, like incest porn you're like i shouldn't be watching this uh mm -hmm. what if somebody sees my browser history um 
and uh but i did and i was just like uh wow that was really wild uh uh, it was uh <clears throat> yeah the 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 music that that song was like a big uh it was i guess like hearing that was like a big deal for me because like i don't think i've ever like engaged with content uh where i was just like maybe i shouldn't be watching this or maybe i shouldn't be listening to this right now like, i'm listening to it in public a very very unique feeling for me so i'm pretty not giving a shit about what anybody thinks about uh what i do or how i think uh and uh that sort of uh uh i think that might have helped burn the fire for me pretty good too yeah um like the well, it was in the wake of all the controversy of stardust platforming mr girl that i crammed all of his content to learn as much as i could about him <laughs> literally mm -hmm. over the next two days like while i was doing work and cleaning in the house and stuff i was i was literally just listening to his his videos and um, still and then every day he's in a battle pass now after Fortnite. Oh, I heard something about Fortnite. No, oh, I think uh, my my kid's in the room behind me. <laughs> I don't I don't play Fortnite. Um, I then um then the whole panel at the end of December happened. You know, where basically Stardust was on Chud Logic stream defending herself against a lot of the accusations. <laughs> And then I jumped on to basically steal woman her position and to push back on, um, on Prague. You say then steal known woman as Demsock zero one one. Yeah, steal woman. That's the way I love it. it. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. So, uh, so I went on to steal woman her position and to push back on Demsock zero one one, otherwise known as Prague. And, uh, because I, I didn't like Prague's framing of the situation. And so mm -hmm. I jumped on, I started doing that, and I started, you know, kind of pr lending some support to to her side. And it, it's not just because she's my friend. It's also because, like, I had seen how the whole thing played out, and I was familiar with the content at that point. And I kind of was familiar with the the message and the, the kind of approach that Mr. Girl had. Yeah, and... you're like a court-appointed expert at this point. Yeah, and I was really frustrated with the way that people were framing her um, platforming of Mr. Girl. So, sure. so I, it was really committed to like jumping in and kind of pushing back on that whole thing. And then it was like more people jumped in, and then Mr. Girl jumped in, and then Rose Wrist jumped oh. in. And it was like this big old thing, and like that's how the whole thing kind of played out. And that's how I came to to know more of Mr. Girl's content and stuff. Previous to that, I really only had the familiarity of the two things that he did before, which was the Cuties review and then the follow-on "I'm a Pedophile" music video. Was was watching all that content? Was it really all work and no play? <laughs> I enjoyed the music videos a lot, yeah. and despite um, my apprehension with some of his language on the consent is complicated video. I actually enjoyed the way he delivered that. Yeah. And um, that also gave me the leverage to push back on like Ico when um, she was making certain claims about him and the conflict that she and I had before I left her community uh, in the video that I did effectively kind of like um, defending myself and pushing back on her claims about the consent is complicated scenario and the Tinder date scenario. So um, that video is currently unlisted on my site just because I don't want it to be part of the algorithm. I should probably find a place to park that as well. But uh, I used my knowledge of that video to kind of push back on it because I, unlike her, unlike Aiko, I had actually seen the video and was mm -hmm. well versed on it. And I had also seen Stardust interview of him multiple times and I rewatched it for the debunking that I did. So I was very familiar with, with all of that. So I've definitely absorbed a lot of his content and um and I watch his stuff as it comes out now. When he did the transfer culture culture video, I watched that one. Mm -hmm. Um I broke my phone watching that. I um I got excited I was in another state to go play magic because I'm a fucking nerd and I so <laughs> 
Uh, it always sounds so uh, suspicious when I tell people how I broke it because I put it, I, I had, uh, I, I didn't want to put my earbud in and get it all wet and shit, but my phone's totally waterproof. So I put it into like the shower holder and I was washing my hair when he was doing the video and I bumped it and my screen cracked and I broke my phone while I was away from home. Because uh, oh, I wanted oh. to hear his little seven minute transal culture uh, video. Uh, uh, I put it at two o'clock in the morning. Dude, it sucks to break your phone out of town. I've done it before. Oh my god. I did it when I was in England. Dropped it in a hot tub. Oh. Well, at least yeah. you're in a more fun scenario than um, washing your hair at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> True. The worst time in yeah. a hot tub beats the best time washing your hair. Yeah. But, yeah, that's kind of how I got exposure to him. And uh, then, of course, all the follow-on discussions that happened. Do you mind yeah. if I go to the restroom real quick? By all means. All right. Back in a second. Um, I'm, uh, I, if anybody thinks that I'm just like, uh, I, I definitely not, uh, I into kiss Sonia's ass. I just had no idea that she was that cool. Uh, like, I, I thought she was cool. She had some really cool takes on the panels, but she's a cool chick. Um, kind of bummed that I didn't watch anything until now. Now I have very high expectations for the content, though. Um, which that probably isn't necessarily super fair, but I do. Oh, got it. Yeah, Zonia is dope. You're right. There you go, a little acoustic. Damn, he'd be building points. <laughs> it's true, that's my coworker. It's funny, I thought you said something earlier in chat, and then I looked, uh, and it was somebody else who said it. Uh, so for a while there, I saw that you were there and thought you weren't there, like right afterwards. Really do need to put a uh, certain stipulation. I haven't updated those since I started doing the interview. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that. Um, I'd honor it. Uh, it's like I have that you can't make me lose the game if I'm playing poker in D and D. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, Chat started harassing me when you left. Really? Talking about spending my points that weren't uh, set up to be for interviews. Uh, <laughs> so if I stopped talking for 30 seconds, uh, they made me do it. Um, I need to fix that and add that stipulation. Um, so, uh, I'm, gl I'm glad you said uh, that it wasn't uh, all work and no play watching the videos because I feel like uh, I'd have a hard time believing that if you powered through them that fast. Uh, and the next question I have for you is, um, what's your favorite video? Mm. And then, you know, and why? Honestly, I really like the consent is complicated video. Okay. Um, because sure. it's something that, like, obviously a lot of what Mr. Girl does is stuff that people never talk about. Yeah. That's sort of a focal point of, of his or things, taboo subjects. Yeah. But honestly, I think his consent is complicated video is one of the most important ones out of all of them. Because he's right. 
that there's effectively culturally today, there's sort of like this script that people run down of like, okay, here is how consent works. And right. it's this very, it's the scripted sort of approach and, and everybody's supposed to follow it. But the problem is consent is complicated. And even if you're following the script to the T, you could still screw up and violate somebody's consent. Yeah. And so the more that you've got blinders on and are just, you know, nose to the grind following the script, the less you're reading the other person and the less you're understanding your partner and the more likely that you're going to do something wrong. It shouldn't be a scripted thing. It should be if you're going to be coupling with another human being, you should be really reading them and feeling them and understanding them and not just being worried about following a script. And his video talks about that, that it's, you got to kind of, you got to kind of do it all. You got to understand consent and understand these things, but at the same time, read the person and read the situation, read the environment. So I think it's one of his most important videos because it's so relevant because almost everybody out there at you know, some point in their earlier life are going to start experiencing sexual intercourse with people for the first time and they're going to be inexperienced and yet we're kind of beating into people that there's like this rules system and if you follow the rules everything's going to be fine well it's not true and if you deviate and... you're literally the worst person ever yeah uh which so... is weird it's such a relevant topic. That's why I like it the most. That's why I think it's so important because it's probably the most relevant topic out of everything that he's covered. Because he could talk about things like, you know, um, like pedophilia and such. And yeah, it's really important, but it's a it's a fraction of society, right? As opposed to consent, which is the majority of society has to contend with consent at some point in their life. Yeah. So uh, to me, it's like his most timeless and most relevant video that he's ever done and it and it talks about the thing we just don't talk about which is that it's it's not all about following a script not all about getting a yes yeah um i actually one of the things that i made in my past that i'm most proud of is i have a friend whose entire job it is to give presentations at a college about consent and she used oh. to go and um, she was like part of the response team for women that had been like sexually abused or like helping women get out of situations where they're being physically abused. Um, oh. And she was actually supposed to come and talk to me about the doll review, but she was having a very hard time. And um, I'm still willing to have that conversation with her later. Uh, but um, I was actually really surprised at um, like, obviously she said like enthusiastic consent is the best. Um, but like, even if things aren't really talked about at all and things just happen, it doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And mm -hmm. I didn't expect that from her. Um, I expected to be the one that had a more nuanced opinion of it because uh, I thought she was going to be like, well, here's the script that we tell and here's what you should follow. And like, I've never met anybody that I could categorize as a consent expert, but like, that's literally her job. She gets paid by a college to do it. And, um, I, I was I was shocked, uh, and Mr. Girl seemed to have a very very uh, similar opinion to her. Um, I don't know if she would have loved the way that he said everything, but um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm okay with that too. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it almost feels like it's not an important conversation to people anymore because like it it seems like people have the idea that we have it all figured out. Mm hmm. Um, at least, at least I think so. And I like that, um, Mr. Grill is kind of like, not only do you not have it all figured out, like, I think you have, uh, the wrong idea. Yep. Um, which, uh, like the only, uh, like she, she, her, her, the things she said were very similar, but, um, I think I liked the way Mr. Grill said it better because, um, it makes you pay attention. Yeah, that's definitely something he's good at. Yeah, he is. He's good at hooking you at the door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the fucking showman. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, 
So that that would be my favorite video of his. I also the real doll, uh, real doll review was very very difficult for me. Oh. Um, I wasn't able to watch the whole thing all the way through. There were parts I had to skip. Um, there were I had to take big breaks from it. So it was a very hard one for me to watch. Was it just um, the end part or the whole deal? Well, honestly, a lot of it. Um, sure. There's something. Okay, so I'm asexual. So I have a very different kind of view of the whole thing. Okay. But to me, there's something really weird about like having sex with a doll. Okay. And I can't really explain why it's weird. It's just there's something seems just so off to me about it and but then in addition to that there's obviously the very emotional part with his partner right with Shaylin yeah and and that's a tough one to watch watching that play out especially with those long pauses and the very raw kind of emotional responses and his um, not backing down it's just like it's a very hard thing for me to watch. I try to not read too much in those things. Like a lot of people in this space, they wanted to say that he's an abuser and stuff and that he's not respecting her wishes. And I can't say that because I just don't know enough about their relationship. So I, I can't reach that far into it mm-hmm. to um to extrapolate what's going on and the limited information for me to work with. So this is something I actually talked to him about at one point when uh, when I was talking to him on stream not that long ago, mm-hmm. and where he did a a um, Collins thing, you know, an AMA kind of thing, and yeah. so I probed him a bit about his like his approach to it and whether or not he worried that his I don't know if you heard me call in that time where whether or not he worried that like airing this personal stuff of his life in this space if it's going to potentially do harm to his his partnership with Shaylin. Yeah. And he I, said I see it all Zonia. It. Yeah. So like that, you know, I would, I I probed him a bit about that and he asked me like what it is that I saw in the in the video and stuff. And I talked about how I, I didn't want to read too much into it because I just don't know enough about their personal life to make a judgment call on it. And like that's where I think I deviate from a lot of people because it seems like a lot of people really quickly want to jump to things and say he's an abuser he shouldn't have treated his partner this way um you know he should have respected her wishes and they say all these things and it's like okay absent of any other information it looks pretty bad yes but i don't know what the social contract is between him and his partner there's a, a lot more that going on that we don't get to see and there may there could be other agreements that are already there that make that situation okay there's no way for me to know um so and he talked to me a bit about it and he said well she does understand that my art is my art and i get to do what i want with it and once she agrees to be a part of my art it's just we're going forward with it and she could back out anytime she wants and leave the situation, but she didn't. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he ex- he walked it, walked me through it, and said that that was, you know, it's it's a long-standing agreement that they had. You know, she has her art that she does. Yeah. He's sometimes a part of it, and then he's got his art. And if she's going to be a part of it, he runs it his way. You know, so yeah. it's like okay, and- yeah. There's definitely more to the social contract than the rest of us get to see. I think there's um I have a But yeah. Long story short, it's hard for me to get through that video. Yeah, um the the one thing that I uh probably didn't really think about until the last couple of days when I think about some of the things I want to shoot for my project is um <clears throat> uh because it's about uh Mr. Girl, anything that I shoot for it that's off stream. Um, I want it to be real. I don't want it to be, um, I don't want anything to come off as disingenuous or dishonest. So I have like a real life interview that I'm going to do too. 
and I feel like I only have it, it, I only get one take no matter what no matter how it goes I get one take at it because mm -hmm. after that it's tainted so it's not like that shot could have ever been done over again um, and even it, I don't think that ever really came into play in my mind um, prior so like you can't really uh, if you're working on something and like this is what you're going to do and you don't know how it's going to go that's kind of the point um, so you got to keep the camera rolling. However, I, yeah. I, I understand, um, why it can be difficult. My wife really fucking hates that video. Um, I I'm don't, um, my, my wife, uh, so I asked, why did you not like it? She says, I think that I identify a lot with Shaylin, uh, in general. So watching it's very hard because she puts herself in that position when she sees that video. Um, and so I have, um, I have a difference in opinion on a lot of the things, but, um, I think that I'll, um, I think that I'll save those things for, um, uh, another time or another stream or an overall project. Cause I don't want to, I, I don't, I don't want to make you feel, uh, weird about the thing that makes you uncomfortable. It doesn't seem like the <laughs> format. I'll just say that I, I have some very, res uh, I respectfully disagree on what I think is happening in that video, um, but I'll leave it at that. You know, I'm actually pretty easygoing talking about those kinds of things. You know, like after the fact, I can definitely, it's easy for me to talk about those. But yeah, while watching it, that was definitely an uncomfortable situation. <laughs> oh, then um, yeah. do you mind that? Or if you're comfortable, no, I go can, for uh... it. Right? So. Uh, I guess just for context, the, the first time I called in a Mr. Grill show, I said that um, I told him a story uh, that I don't I don't really want to go over again live. I did it once, and it was okay. But then I also said the other reason I'm calling in is because I'm having a hard time um, really understanding how I'm supposed to interact with my boundaries uh, with my wife because um, I, I just I always want to make my wife happy. Um, and I know that um, when I'm holding boundaries, sometimes it feels like I'm doing something wrong. Uh, and I think that even I'm wording it way better than I did then. He told me to go to therapy. And I did. Like quickly after that, I went to therapy. I know he says to everybody, but it worked for me. I went and uh, I get really good at holding my boundaries and understanding what they are. My therapist is a fucking all star. So when I watched this uh, video, um, the, the thing that I saw the whole time was. Um, Mr. Girl saying, uh, well, this is, uh, this is the boundary that I have. Um, and if you don't want to, um, respect it, that's fine. But, um, this is what happens when, uh, when you're not respecting my boundary. And then Shaylin was like, um, I want you to like, just like, fuck that. I am, I'm upset and I want you to uh, take care of me. Despite the fact that your boundary is that you don't want to do that right now. Uh, I'm mad. I'm upset. So you shouldn't hold your boundary. Uh, and I should just get what I want. And when everybody got really mad and, and to me, uh, that hurts to hear me. Uh, that hurts for me to hear somebody say, because, um, I, I would fall into that a lot uh, when um, somebody who's close to me would be like, yeah, I understand that you don't want this thing that I'm talking about, but um, I think you should just suck it up and uh, give me what I want and ignore what you want. And he mm -hmm. didn't, and he didn't do it. And, um, and, and the, the crying kind of got to me emotionally. And he said, you're still trying to get me to do what you want. And she said, yeah. And I was like, oh God. And it, like, because I think that sometimes people press and they're not aware. Um, yeah. But like the fact that she was aware, I kind I got a little mad at her. I was like, oh, what the fuck? And then when people <laughs> came in and started uh, piling on Mr. Girl, saying like, well, you, you should have just done what she was. And I'm like, wait a minute. What? Why is it okay to say like you're literally telling him that he should be doing for her what she aggressively uh, was not willing to do for him? Like, why is it? Why is it only one way? Like, like it's either sexist. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I, I can't think of any other way around it. You're literally saying it's totally fine in one direction and not the other direction. Um, mm -hmm. And he didn't, uh, 
do I, it, to me he didn't do anything to try to um like manipulate the situation he wasn't trying to like pull her heartstrings mm. or anything like that so i was just like it feels like everybody's crazy um he followed all the rules that my therapist told me to follow uh that's self-care uh and so it really yeah. freaked me out i didn't think that uh I didn't think that so many people would have such a strong stance opposite of like what I uh, spent the last few months really struggling to get a good handle on. Um, well, I think what it stemmed from is where her boundaries kind of got um, where she, she wasn't willing to like, it was her boundaries that she didn't want to concede to basically being the doll twice a month. Right. And that was where she started to get her back up and get defensive. And then um, I don't remember exactly how it played out because I didn't watch it end to end. So it was like skipping around. Sure. So that's part of the problem. So I don't remember the exact order of things, but like he pushed the point of just, you know, two times a month, I think it was. She would just lay there silently and not make any sounds at all. Once a month, or was it once a month? Okay, I thought yeah, it was she, she agreed to that though, yeah. uh, like pretty quickly. But she, I don't think she, because initially she was thinking that she would still like she could still make sounds, but she would lie still, right? But then it was like, no, I don't even want you to make sounds because mm. then it's to please you, not to please me. Right. And I think that's where she got defensive, oh. if I remember correctly. That's an interesting framing because I've never heard anybody um, address it in that way. I guess for me, if I was in that situation, I, uh, I would want to understand that the um, situation had changed dramatically. Or like if this was a conversation that I had for my wife, with my wife, I would, I would really hope that she would say, well, that part changes how I feel about like, like now you're yeah. asking me something different because I don't think I'd understand that at all. Even watching, I've watched that video like four or five times. Uh, I never caught that. And um, I've never heard anybody say that. Uh, but I think that's a really interesting to, frame. I'd have to watch it again just to make sure that I'm remembering it the, properly. It sounds skipping right. around. Skipping around wasn't helpful, <laughs> obviously. Sure. But I kept like hitting points where it's like, especially with the sexual ones, I was like, nope, he's still jerking off. Okay, skip, skip, skip. <laughs> I, I had it <laughs> in know? windowed mode and I'd put the window down just so I didn't have to see his dick during that stuff because I still wanted to <laughs> see like the whole thing, you know? You could but still like, hear it though. It was so audible. It was so I think gross. I was supposed to be uncomfortable, <laughs> but like I can be uncomfortable and not look at his dong. It's it's too yeah. weird. It's like seeing uh like I guess I have to concede some level of parasociality that's beyond my control, but it's like I see Mr. Girl more than I see uh most people that I like I interact with a lot of people online, but like when I watch like three or four streams a week, I'm seeing him more than a lot of other people. I don't wanna see his dick. Like I don't wanna yeah. see like my buddy comes over to play magic, like I don't wanna see his dick. Uh that's not interesting to me. It'd be awkward. Uh I don't want you to know like I like I don't want you to know that I seen like I don't, I don't want us to yeah. have this shared understanding. Like, I know what your dick looks like. It's a little weird for me. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be intimate with uh, my friends at that level. And uh, so yeah. I just kind of scroll. I just sort of put that part down and move through it that way. It was weird. It, it, it's yeah, well, kind of weird because he's like, I want you guys all to see that. And I was like, that's cool. I'll, I'll watch the rest, of the, the rest of the scene, just not that part. Yeah, well, I kept skipping. I'd skip too far forward, and then I'd skip back, and then you know, so it's a little jumbled. But yeah, sure. I kind of remember the tone changing after that. You know, when when she said that, and um, and I could kind of see it too because it's like, I think for a lot of people, they can't control themselves making any sound when having sex. You know, they're experiencing the pleasure no matter what, right? Yeah. They wouldn't have sex if they weren't experiencing the pleasure. So if they are, for a lot of people, they're not able to not make sounds in response to the pleasure. Oh, and that you know kind how of fix that? breaks things yeah. down for some people. Uh, there's actually a really good cure for that. Uh, have a kid. You'll figure <laughs> that shit out fast. <laughs> that's, that's probably true, yeah. 
<laughs> nothing nothing uh, uh breeds change like necessity and let me tell you <laughs> now i have like the opposite problem i have uh trouble making sounds because i've had a kid for so long it's like um no i'm present uh, i'm here um i don't know if my kid's asleep though so i like your kid's not even talking you're like oh that's true okay my brain's broken <laughs> my bad um oh uh, that's very true i didn't even think of that just borrow yeah. a kid for a week he'll figure it out <laughs> Uh, don't frame it like that, though. Don't be like, hey, can I babysit your kid for a week? Why is that? Because I'm trying to get quieter at sex. I don't think that's a... I think that might be a bit too honest. Uh, that would be a red flag, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely don't think that shit would fly if it was Mr. Girl. Like, look, man, I understand your jokes are jokes, but, like, stay away from my kid now, okay? <laughs> your videos are funny, but, uh, we have a different relationship now. Um... Uh. Yeah, I, yeah, I really, so I really appreciate that thing. frame. I'm going to think about that a little more. But I still say, if that's the case, um, it's absolutely your responsibility to be upfront about that. Like, um, did you yeah, see the new video, How to Say No? Lies. Yeah, I need to, I need to, no, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, but I saw that. I know what you're talking about. It is the best PSA I have ever seen on the subject in my life. Like, it's, um, like, it's not just, like, it, it like has funny parts and it's like good like he always does good camera work, but like the message is so well delivered in a way that nobody ever delivers it like oh, the message is always like just say no just say no uh, that's all you ever really get in like the level of nuance and uh application so like acknowledging the reality of how people actually go about saying it and why it's not mm -hmm. effective when they say it it's just smart smart and responsible uh i was really really fucking impressed yeah. um it's like a lot of like a lot of his content but i was like i think this is good for everybody uh and, and i don't know if i'd say that about a lot of videos i think it's good for a lot of people i think you have a good community of people like i think it's like you're making good stuff for what you're trying to do but i think that one was um just good uh i think that if he didn't have such a controversial past um that wouldn't be the worst uh like actual PSA to show in like schools and stuff. It was legitimately well done uh, in a different way than uh, I would say that his other stuff is legitimately well done. Yeah. It, it almost seemed like the responsibility to this message was the number one priority and everything else was secondary to it. Yeah, I really recommend it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Y you touched on this a little bit. Uh, so the um like i know that you guys have had a lot of back and forth and um max himself even commented on the tweet about us talking tonight and uh i wanted to ask I, you sorry say that? that kind of cut out for a moment oh i said uh like you guys have had a lot of interesting conversations to say the least and mm -hmm. uh max himself even uh like he commented on uh, the tweet about us streaming um, and to imply, uh, well, I think to, to allude to the experiment he proposed to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the um, lab bunny or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, I responded saying the horror stories I could tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was fucking phenomenal. I, I was like, oh. Wow, I, I I kind of expected uh him to just pretend uh like I wasn't doing this at all, even though I know he knows. And I, I know that he knows that I know. It just seemed like the Mr. Girl style thing to do. Um but I think uh because I, I I had already had this question uh made up. I think it was uh one of the more interesting interactions between you guys. Uh I was actually uh really shocked when he said it. And I was actually surprised earlier when he said that the DGG crowd was really mad. Because yeah. uh, I was going to ask you, did it did it ever come back up between you guys? Uh, did like uh, I that one was like one of the hardest ones to tell if he's like, no, I really think you should try this, or um, if he's just uh, giving he that Mister Girl charm. Uh, he was serious. I I can I can definitely go either way. I'll, I'll definitely lean on uh, your uh, interpretation of that. Uh, yeah, no, he was very serious about it. And yes, it has come up multiple times. Um, 
you know, usually when we end up on a panel together or something, it'll come up or some like viewer will ask about it or something. Um, yeah, it's come up a lot. It comes up when I it, like. I mentioned the transit culture panel seems to be the one that comes up the most, but every once in a while it's the blackface thing that comes up when I'm on like a voice chat somewhere or on a panel or when Max and I are, especially are on a panel, somebody will ask about it. Somebody in one of the viewers will, or multiple viewers. And sometimes Max will just bring it up. So it's definitely come up multiple times since then. And he was serious about it. I mean, <laughs> it felt like it, but um, it was just so edgy. You have to wonder if, uh, cause he's, it takes a while to tell when Mr. Hill's joking. You, you gotta, you already gotta know the flavor when it's to know when it's changing, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah, I yeah know that it comes back. Was uh, like multiple people in the in Destiny's community were not happy about it. Um. A lot of people demanded that uh, that he apologize to me. <laughs> What's like funny? Laugh about that too. <laughs> That's something he's also brought up before. He's like, for whatever reason, every time that that I engage with you, a whole bunch of people get pissed off at me. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, a whole bunch of people come after me. So. Yeah, I guess I never caught that part because I was going to ask you if that if that happens. Um, how does it make you feel when that gets brought up, like by him? Is it like um, because I could I could take it like in a, I can imagine it being a couple ways. I can imagine it being like barely dehumanizing uh, but i also know that you're um you seem to be really good at letting things roll off your shoulders and having a sense of humor about a lot of stuff and um and uh the way you interacted with it uh like like did he ever go into detail with you on the side and like no don't you don't you think this might actually be like a thing that could work because i think that even if he was joking, I think that he thinks that it might actually do something. I, I'm not, I have literally no opinion on that. Uh, I have, I, I don't know how the mind works like that. Well, to answer your first question, no, nah, it doesn't bother me. Like you said, it really rolls off my back really easily. So yeah. things like that don't really bother me. It's, it is funny sometimes, you know, to think um, like, of all the things I'm known for to have that being one of the, the crowning achievements is kind of funny <laughs> sometimes to think about, but um, no, he hasn't followed up with me in private about it. In okay. Any specific... I guess I shouldn't even ask like that. Uh, I'm trying not to get too, uh, ask questions about private stuff. I guess. Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> We've had very few private interactions. Almost all of our interactions have been exclusively on someone's channel. Yeah, I guess I guess all I was really trying to ask when I said that too is like, did you did he like break down the system? Like, all right, you're gonna start with the just just your hand for a day, and then the next day you're gonna go full arm, and then a week from now you're gonna be completely covered in black makeup, and then uh, stay that well, way for two days, and then re like remove the makeup like this section by this. I I don't know if he had like a a whole ass system or what, cause like. The fucking sometimes like I know Mr. Girl's content, but every once in a while I'm just like the fucking balls on this guy. Uh, I don't know how Shaylin's <laughs> yeah. not dead because his balls have to weigh more than the rest of his body combined. Like, true. My God, um, you know, he kind of did have a it. system when he presented it on Stardust panel originally. So he I, did I, talk a little bit about like this the like start with the small area and then yeah. you know work your way out. So he talked about that a little bit during that panel, but no, it never really went beyond that. Um, and I genuinely have uh, no opinion. It seems well, if I, if I had an opinion, it seems like it's probably uh, just very silly. Like on on a scale of <laughs> yeah, one to is. ten, like one being like the. Uh, have, have you seen everything everywhere all at once? Not yet. No. It's phenomenal. Uh, I do want to see it. it looks good. really cool. Uh, what, what did I use as an example? Then that was that was when I had locked ready to go, like uh, like one being like a cat barking at you, or in like ten being like uh like this is like literal like uh like known scientific fact. Like how crazy did that sound to you? It was like 
It was like a cat barking at me with a duck tail. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like some people might have heard that and be like, oh shit, he might have just done something there, you know? <laughs> you know what's um, funny is that I could actually go at length talking about that kind of concept and about dysphoria, but it mm -hmm. wasn't really the platform for it, so I didn't sure. go into a lot of depth and detail. So it would have been interesting to sort of break down um, the complexities of dysphoria and where it deviates from something like like aesthetically changing something else about your appearance, why that wouldn't work. It'd be an interesting thing to talk about and go at length about and kind of show why it is that there's such vastly different things, but it, we didn't really have the time or place to do it. So, you know. I explained what I could about dysphoria with the limited time and space that we had to do it. <laughs> sure. Um, and and I, I know I've had you for a while, so I don't know how much time you have. I think I have like, like just a handful of other questions. Do you want to try to lay it out or is it going to take you more time than you got? That one's going to be too complicated. Talking sure. about it, dysphoria is definitely an involved one because it usually prompts a lot more questions. So we'll be going for like a good hour. Okay. Um, well, if, if you if you ever uh, put out a video, link it to me, or all if right. if, uh, if if you ever wanted to talk to me about it, I'm all ears. Especially, um, it it, it does hit, hit kind of close to home, at least for me. Um, yeah. So, uh, no matter how, if you ever put it out there in any way, I'm interested to hear what you say because um, I don't really have that. Um. Uh, I'm just dis like all the stuff that I don't like about my body. I'm disappointed in myself for it's my fault. Mm -hmm. I did this shit to me. Um, so this is one that I'm probably gonna ask everybody. Uh, do you think right. that Max is helping people? Hmm, that's a good question. I think that Max is helping people. The hotline, I think, has helped some people. I've listened to a lot of those call-ins. Are you grouping and... advice and confessions in with that too? um yeah that's a, the yeah advice and confessions okay kind so of both of them. in general yeah okay, okay. yeah because um people have asked some like legitimate questions that he gave serious thought to and answered huh. that you know even people admitted they're like they thanked him for it and and said that he helped them out so that was one of them definitely helping some people out there with regard to his general content, mm -hmm. that one's hard to say. Because my big criticism of Max has been that sometimes optics do matter. And sure. he doesn't agree with me on that. But the way I see it, Max, I think, does have the potential to get people thinking about things in ways they don't normally do, which is his goal. and. Mm -hmm. The problem is that his approach to it is such a blunt shock kind of yeah. instrument that you basically get you get two extreme polarized reactions. One, which is the most common, is the opposition reaction, where people are yeah, just offended by it. They automatically jump to conclusions about him, and they write him off. And they become, if anything, more resolute than what they already believe about the subject. Yeah. Because they see him as being sort of like a representation of the problem of that subject. So when he talks about pedophilia or when he talks about consent, um, is his way of delivering it. Well, honestly, the consent is complicated video I thought was one of his better ones in, in terms of delivery, but the way they deliver these things is you're going to get somebody who's basically going to, like if he talks about pedophilia, people are going to write him off as a pedophile and say, yeah, this guy is just paving the way for more pedophiles to hurt more kids. That's the conclusion that most people are going to come to. And so they're not going to think about things differently. And then the other side of the coin is you're going to get a bunch of people who agree with them. And many of the people in that agreeing space are going to be people who are looking for people to give them a pass or excuse them 
not all of them, but some there are going to be people who are looking for that. It's going to be mixed. So, like, so, you're saying, like, he's cultivating, like, like the people that are going to agree, there's going to be a, a higher than average number of, say, pedophiles. Yeah, or exactly. people that, um, uh, like, even though it's not the intended goal, he's going to give, like, uh, transphobes craftier ammo to use. Yeah, there's another one as well. Sure. And so, if he were better with his optics, he could actually get people to think about these topics differently. Like, I've done it before. I've actually had a lot of conversations since my discussion with Mr. Girl about pedophilia and the need to come up with a pathway for people who have attraction to to minors to pursue treatment. Yeah, I, and, I really agree. And I've had that conversation successfully with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's... But Max's delivery doesn't really accomplish that. He tends to turn more people off to the idea and get people to sort of double down on their positions and see him as part of the problem, see him as a pedophile. So this is where my disagreement with Max has been, is that optics do matter. And I think this hurts his cause, his, his inability or unwillingness to um, to consider optics. I think it hurts even his underlying cause. And he says that he does, he wants to get people to think about things differently. Well, yeah. when people are doubling down on and, and becoming more uh, res resolute in their thinking because you're, you know, hitting them with something that's an optic night optics nightmare. Sure. If you're not yeah, changing no the way they're thinking. Optics aren't, uh, aren't the best. Cause you can have somebody uh, yeah. like, Bausch, who I think has garbage, dog shit opinions about almost everything he opens his uh, mouth about. But his optics are fucking great, and he suckers a lot of people in by talking real good. Uh, mm -hmm. And trapping the people, like people that are right, into a dialogue tree, where they get frustrated with them, and it makes it look like they don't know what they're saying. Uh, and so, yeah, it can, it works, it works uh, for the forces of good and evil. But, um... Yeah. So that's where I think he has issues with his content actually helping people and delivering a message. I think what you're the what you get is like you get the rare like destinies and stardusts and me who are going to be very very charitable and mm. go out of our way to suspend our initial feelings and initial reactions. Sure figure out what's actually going on most people don't do that most people don't suspend their initial emotional reactions especially when they're based on very visceral internal reactions like pedophilia right yeah um i have uh borderline a problem with being charitable to people like somebody can't even vent to me about uh like their shitty parent that they're always still mad at like well, do you think maybe they were doing that because of this? And nobody wants to fucking hear that. <laughs> no, they um, don't. They just want to vent. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've gotten to the habit of saying, am I, am I listening, just listening or am I responding to? Because that way I don't have to accidentally um, hurt people who are trying to vent. Um, but the, so I, do, I, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. And I think it was like my maybe like my second or third day of like checking out Mr. Grill's content and it was during the book smarts one I think. And I was driving up north and my wife was like, Are you listening to this again? Like, oh my god, why is he talking about this kind of thing? And I was like, you know, I feel like if you listen to half of what Max says, that's gonna sound real fucking bad. Sometimes if you listen to ninety percent of what he says, he's gonna sound like a pedophile. But if you listen to the whole thing, he always finds a way to bring back around what he's saying, and it makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, the people that uh, are going to get super upset and mad, these aren't the people that have the capacity to listen to somebody talk about this. Uh, I, th I feel like, well, I feel like we're shrinking, we're shrinking down. Uh, it's like the people who wouldn't, who could be brought in by good optics, I think might be... Uh, a pretty small pool of the people that would or are they um that are gonna get really mad and begin with as soon as you say the word 
uh, mm -hmm. like pedophile or like uh, we should be empathetic towards pedophiles. I don't think there's any way you can slip that in without triggering a big response in people to where they're yeah. going to hear everything that needs to be said, uh, no matter how well you polish it. Um, but um, I, do, I do think uh, to some degree the optics would be really good. Um, but I also think that if Mr. Girl cared about optics, he wouldn't be Mr. Girl anymore. That's true. I and he know said something similar to that when I talked to him about it during the two hours of hate uh, questioning. Yeah, that, that two hours of hate was interesting because there wasn't that much hate. There really wasn't. <laughs> I'm there was a like... hard time finding people that don't like Mr. Grill to talk to me who aren't um, insane. Uh, go ahead and say what you're going to say. I'll well, tell you what I mean by insane. Well, it's like the only people. Well, the problem is that the people who really hate him do not want to talk to him or about him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like such a visceral, extreme hate. They want nothing to do with him. Sure. And. It's kind of interesting the way that works. So you're you're basically you're either gonna get like the fans, or you're gonna get like those ultra charitable people like me, right? Yeah. Um, and we're not gonna have you know the charitable people are not gonna have a very strong, uh, you know, thing to say. We're gonna have a much more balanced criticism of him, and the fans are just gonna want to fawn after him. So it's a kind of a difficult thing to actually achieve when he inspires such extreme hate. <laughs> right. I, uh, I get that. Um, yeah. I think the closest thing that I have is uh, somebody who really didn't like him. Well, I guess I, 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 de I DM'd it to you. Uh, and that's set up soon. But I had a person, because I, I kind of put out like a like a wide net, said if you are a big Mr. Grill fan or if you're a Mr. Grill hater, uh, let me know, because I wanna I, I wanna talk to you. I'm uh, and I got one person who said um, I don't even want to say what they said. It was all text, but they said Mr. Grill did the, a bad thing. And uh, I was like, okay, what's up? And then they um, presented what happened. Um, so, like, I guess they, they gave me some messages. And I was like, this is, like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, nothing bad happened at all. Uh, the person was just, like, actually crazy. Like, as charitable as I am, uh, I was just like, no, you're, you need, like, you 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 just can't uh you just shouldn't talk to people that you don't know ever um cuz this is a very very normal it was like a very normal conversation and they were very very upset by it mm -hmm. uh, and it was very strange uh, uh it was really really strange cuz i was like oh this is weird i didn't expect anybody to say that mr grill like like legitimately did something wrong to them uh and i showed like one person uh who i trust and they were like Wow, who I think would have been like really happy to see uh, something bad coming from Max, and no, it was fine. Uh, and other than that, I got the person that I sent you, which is like as close as it gets, I guess. I don't feel like there's any like hate there. Um, Wait, you sent me someone because I yeah, don't I, remember I DM'd, seeing that. I just just uh, while I was talking here. Oh wait, my my Discord's being funky. I don't see it. Yeah, it's red. Let me see. Oh, my Discord's reconnecting on my phone too. Well, that's weird. Mm. Might be a regional outage. Oh, no. I just got a... Uh... Cool that our audio is still working, though. Our voice chat is still working. Yeah. Oh, I think it's back. Hold on. Maybe try resending. Uh, let's see. Let's see. And I guess as I'm checking this, um, maybe I have somebody else who's not the biggest fan too. 
I just got a message back that I wasn't expecting to see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah the one, one of the one of those is um is a fan of mine. Uh, I the, think I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that just happened. Um, but it seems cool. that, that that one seems like it, uh, based on the response too. So I guess that would be really cool because I think that one's um a lot more towards not liking Mister Girl, um, even though it's complicated. But I'm it's hard because like I I need that too. I don't. I don't want to present uh, like this is this is the narrative of how the community feels about Mr. Girl and how mm -hmm. he's been able to carve out a space for himself. And by the way, it's only full of people saying uh, good or neutral things. Uh, that's not honest, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I really hope that I can um, find some of the stuff. Uh, and I know uh, I already announced like I think Chud. Uh, doesn't give a fuck. He'll he'll tell me what he thinks other th people don't like. <laughs> I think with <laughs> no problem. But um, I, I it's it's difficult. Uh, and and it feels weird to like uh, try to find somebody who doesn't like and is going to talk to you about things they don't like about somebody that you really respect and do like. Um, the guy who made the um, the the hit piece on him said he'd answer some questions in text. Uh for me so that's 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 okay i guess um that yeah. he might uh but i guess i want to understand what people really don't like and i don't want to assume uh because like I, I mean it's easy to guess um but i, I guess i want to know what what makes people not like him to the point of being willing to talk about why they don't like him you know if you don't like him because you don't like people talking about pedophiles all right i get that that's fine so you don't, and uh, but like if you're upset enough to talk to me about why you don't like him, it's more than that. Are you be... going? What's that? Oh, go ahead. No, no, hang on. Who's? Ahead. Give me this. I had really good noise canceling headphones. I didn't notice at first. Uh, hmm. I guess my wife had an alarm. My apologies. Uh, so, uh, and I wouldn't say that everything that you said is super positive. Um. I, I would, but I think that, um, I don't think you just said anything really negative or damning either. Uh, and I like sense, like I'm dying to get something damning. I just, I want to understand why the people that have uh, interacted with him uh, like and respect him. I want to understand why the people mm -hmm. that have interacted with him uh, dislike and disrespect him. And I just kind of want to paint the whole picture. Because sometimes, uh, like a friend of mine just watched a few of his videos for the first time. So I didn't really think he's for me. And I feel like I got a vibe of like, I don't understand why you like Mr. Girl. I'm like, well, that's that's what I'm making this about. So that like, if you know somebody who's a Mr. Girl fan, and maybe you've heard a thing or two that's like really off-putting, like, well, this is this is what we see. Um, and this is what we know that it looks like too, from the mouths of the people who don't like him. But this is why um, we think it's a good thing. And why his fan base is, um, pretty loyal maybe we got some of the ggers but you know what ggers are like inherently un unloyal half of destiny's <laughs> community fucking hates him too uh, i used to think that True. it was a meme but like i don't know ggers are the fucking craziest fucking people uh that, like half of them say like spend like all day typing nothing into his chat uh like like they're just showed up so they can fucking spam pepe uh emojis the whole time <laughs> Uh, half of them are just there to, like, completely denounce everything that he says, uh, with, with fucking, like, subscriber badges next to their fucking name. It's, it's, it's yeah. mind-blowing. Well, like, during the, um, the Erudite, <laughs> you know, kerfuffle, you know, Erudite, Destiny, and, um, Max kerfuffle, I jumped into Destiny's stream, into stream chat, and was interacting on the website chat, and I was like, I was like, all right, gang, give me the score. What's going on? And like, right. it was almost 50 50. Like, literally half of the website chat was pissed off at Max, and the other half was like, chill. And it was really funny to see that reaction and to see what people were telling me. And <laughs> have people be like, all right, are you on? Like, people were asking me, like, okay, are you on Mr. Girl good or Mr. Girl bad side now? Right. Like, like 
uh i guess i'm still on mr girl good am i getting canceled for that and like a bunch <laughs> of people are like hey, don't get angry with me um <laughs> it was pretty funny but um i i don't think like i don't think bgg is gonna turn on me for for still being okay with mr girl but it was funny to see that reaction going on at the time <laughs> it's such a divide too uh it's interesting um it's weird like you'd think that like destiny giving the seal of approval like all all you really did was say like okay half of us like you now well half of us are willing to give you a chance the other half is willing to not give you a chance <laughs> it's super goofy <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I feel like even putting DGG as like one like branded community is like a bizarre thing. It's um, a it's a complicated community, that's for sure. It's a melting pot. It's yeah. like uh it's like when you talk about America as a whole, like Michigan and uh Texas are really fucking different, I can tell you that. Uh and like California is really different than like uh, Ohio. Uh, yeah. it's just, it's, it's weird. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like the perception is that a lot of people, uh, like, I feel like just because, uh, the vast majority of people found out about Mr. Girl because of Destiny doesn't mean that it's, his crowd is, uh, uh like made up entirely of Destiny fans, which I think is yeah. what a lot of people conflate. Uh, and that's kind of weird to me. Yeah, but, no, he has a lot of dedicated fans. A lot of them uh, showed up in my stream. Like I ended up with a lot of of Mr. Girl fans becoming regulars in my stream, and they were not DGGers. Like they didn't have, um, like I didn't recognize them, and they didn't weren't too familiar with Destiny's content. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my weren't. followers on Twitter, are Mr. Girl followers, so. Which is kind of funny the way that worked out. Um, probably about like I'd say rough estimate is maybe somewhere around eighty to a hundred of my followers are Mr. Girl fans, and probably around like two hundred to three hundred of those are of my followers are DGGers. Maybe mm -hmm. about a hundred of them are VGGers. Oh. Originally, I used to have a lot more Vosh community members like around both in my stream and my twitter but i had a bit of a falling out with a lot of vosh adjacent community like particularly demon mama's community mm -hmm. and that kind of rippled through vosh's community and i got banned from vosh's server uh from his discord i'm still in vosh's website chat and i'm still a tier four on in vosh's website but um Things are not as as smooth as they used to be. Yeah, you know, used to be everybody would be, be cheering me whenever I showed up in chat. Nowadays, it's a pretty cold reception. Do you think that's so, because of your associations with Mr. Girl and um, things aren't um, good between them? Mostly, it had to do with my falling out with Demon Mama and her community. Gotcha. But some of it also had to do with my associations with Mr. Girl. There were multiple. BGGers who were not happy with the fact that I was friendly with Mr. Girl. Also, uh, my association with Stardust is another big one. Oh, they can fuck up. So I look. I don't understand how you can actually hate Stardust. Like how? Yeah. Uh, I, I can't. How would I even think of a metaphor? Um, <laughs> it, it's it. Well, I don't know that 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 metaphor is a little too vulgar. Because I don't know. Stardust is just she's nice. Uh, I like it's weird that I don't know it's people get really they freak out about Stardust for some reason obviously her platforming of Richard Spencer was sort of like a big um, breaking point for a lot of people for obvious reasons so I kind of get that mm -hmm. but she's been getting hate for a long time and I don't know why so even long before that, she was getting hate. So yeah, I, I get a lot of people don't like the fact that I'm friends with Stardust. 
Um, I've I've had a lot of guilt by association stuff. So like the reason I got yeah. banned from Vosh's Discord is because the words in in the bot were gammy simp because they didn't like that I was friendly with gammy. It was gammy. I'm bad with names. Gami is the correct pronun- pronunciation of her name, but um. Yeah, Gami is a Twitter, typically known as a Twitter shit poster, but she also does panels sometimes. She's like a panelist sometimes. Okay. And uh, she has a long history of being in contention with certain trans creators in the space. And she herself is trans. Okay. Um, but she's had a lot of conflict with Doe and Demon Mama and many of their friends and mods and stuff. So, um, yeah, they. There was sort of a a, um, there was a big push to kick me out of the entire community, Vosh's extended community, like what I call the Vosh extended universe. That's so like everything that all the offshoot communities from Vosh. Um, I, I like, that. and I got, I got banned from a lot of spaces, including Vosh's Discord. The um. The websites are a different story because they're headed up by White Nervosa, who is a friend of mine, and I'm fairly good terms with the website administrator team. Though there's a little bit of coldness there as well, but um, still friends with White Nervosa. So there's a little bit more willingness to be charitable to me in the website team. So I'm not banned from the websites. But yeah, there was a big push to get me just completely banned from the entire, from all the Vosh related spaces. And I got kicked out of most of them. All because of guilt by association. It seems like you got a lot of uh, undeserved bullshit. I, and I, I know somebody's going to hear that thing. Everybody does. But like, it seems like you get it extra. Uh, I've talked to you for over three hours now, and you've never said a single thing that leads me to believe that you might not be a good person who's doing their best. Um, in fact, quite to the contrary. Uh, you really blew my mind at the beginning of this, and, uh, <clears throat> and you seem honest, too. Uh, I, it fucking sucks. Uh, I guess I'm very not sympathetic. Too... Not to lean too heavily into id pull, but honestly, I kind of think it's what Stardust talks about is that if, like, her as a woman of color, she gets a lot more focus on the things that people disagree with. Mm-hmm. And, like, me as a trans woman, uh, and, you know, I get a lot of focus on the things that people disagree with me on, especially from the left. And that's where it seems like all the hate comes from, is like the very far left. So, um, you know, people who are closer to the middle, sock them types, mm-hmm. get along fine with them. I generally don't really have many issues. But if you're a trans woman or if you're a woman of color, it seems. You got to play by the rules. Yeah, it seems like if you don't, um, if you don't fit the far left aesthetic <laughs> and say all the same things, you okay. get kind of bullied out of the space. Yeah, because then you're kind of everybody. Yeah, and so Stardust kind of talks about it as it's a, um, she relates it to like a white supremacy that's sort of inherent in the far left because it is a dom, dom, white dominated um, portion of the space. And and so there's a bit of like that white supremacy and, and, um, and kind of um, patriarchal element embedded in the far left as long as you say all the right words and have the right aesthetic and toe the line you're you're generally going to be okay if you're white and you and you do some of the wrong things you're generally okay but if you're white and you're a minority or marginalized group you tend to get ganged up on really quickly um, or if you're a you know mar- if you're a woman in a marginalized group, et cetera, if you fit like these marginalized groups, and you tend to kind of get suddenly very quickly focused on and ganged up on. I wasn't sure whether or not Stardust was correct in that, but originally, but more and more as time goes on, I do see it's like it's minority people in the far left who, as soon as they don't toe the line, 
they just get ganged up on. Yeah. I but think... the people who are more, you know, like, um, who fit majority, like for instance, Mike from PA. Mike, Mike from PA can say all the wrong him. things and do all the wrong things, but the dude never has been canceled. Always gets so a much. ton of, yeah, always gets a ton of donos. Always gets a lot of support. Um, Bad Bunny, another one, you know. Uh, I don't like says, her. Says the worst things. Says transphobic stuff. Says racist stuff. Gets the pass on everything. Gets tons of support, right? You know, but then Stardust doesn't toe the line. Before she even, long before she even platformed um, uh, uh, Richard Spencer, she was getting just ganged up on all the time for her apparently bad takes. Me, um, I criticized Demon Mama for what I perceived as her. Um, instigating online harassment and bullying against a much smaller creator, a fraction what, of her size. What a sweet and charitable way to word that she's the worst person in the world. <laughs> yeah, and, and so I got ganged up on. And it's like, it's just, um, it seems like it's very selective. Like if you are of the privileged white, you know, class within the left, you can get away with almost anything and just be racist and everything and you're okay um but if you're um a person of color or if you're a trans woman and you don't toe the line you get ganged up on that's it she does seem to be correct in that assessment from the pattern that i've seen yeah um i i've been saying for a long time uh i i don't ever want to call myself a centerist like i definitely lean towards like social democrats uh, social democracy, right? But um, yeah. I I hate I hate the extreme sides of both sides because uh, I feel like uh, people on the right are like like uh, people on the far right. I feel like they know they're evil. This is just me. And the people on the far left um, are insane and they don't realize it, or they think that they're righteous. Well, but yeah, they're insane. oftentimes they're morally lucky and never really had to test their moral beliefs and ethical positions based on reality. Um, they kind of were um, dropped into being on the correct position, and so have never had to work out their own biases. And I think that's I think there's a big problem with racial and racial bias and misogyny and sexism on the far left that's just basically excused away and dismissed as no we're the correct ones so we couldn't possibly be racist we we're couldn't the good possibly slave be owners. Sexist. yeah and and so it's it's just overlooked and yeah. as soon as someone who fits within those marginalized classes steps out of line all the racism comes out or all the sexism comes out or all the misogyny comes out right yeah i it's weird that there's a uh, i uh making me think about it in a different way it's super weird that saying that um a trans woman or a woman of color um isn't just allowed to have a life like anybody else instead you yeah. have to follow our rules otherwise you're one of the bad ones and you're ruining it for all the good ones who do listen to what we say that's that's the perspective yeah. you're putting out right that's yeah up, and like, i've that's that's an accurate and i've often said us. before that I've gotten far more harassment, hate, and death threats from the left than I have from the right. <laughs> yeah. And I get a lot of exposure to the right. You know, it's not like I'm hiding from conservatives or anything. So honestly, I get better treatment from conservatives than I do from the far left. But um, yeah, definitely there's a lot more hate. And I get a lot more hate, especially from other trans people. Like there's... For the I got a lot reason, of right. Yeah, I think so. Okay, go on. So it's yeah, it's it's a weird position to be in, especially considering I'm farther to the left than like a lot of the people I associate with. Most sure. of the people that I associate with and collaborate with regularly are closer to the center than I am. They're like socked and you know, and or you know, left leaning, and I'm pretty far to the left. So, um, 
but I don't really get any support from others. Very little support from people who are as far to the left as me. It tends to be more hostile. And so much of it has to do with guilt by association. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Is it, um... Yeah, I'll fix that. I'm sorry. Uh, Is there a, uh... I guess when when you're when you're in a, such a small group like you're a trans woman and that's not it's not like you have a ton of uh places to go for support where um where it's not going to be populated by other trans women right or trans people and if they're uh if they, if they're if they're upset with you and they're mad at you too like does it make it hard for you to find like a, a community uh, where you don't have to deal with any of this shit? Not really. Um, oh, good. I've so I, originally I did try to hang out in trans-specific, like trans-focused communities, but I found them to be just a little too toxic and negative. Um, there's a problem with groups that are focused around um, building a community around a marginalized status and, and dealing with issues of like, you know, being victimized and stuff and suffering from various secondary social issues. It, you end up with a lot of toxicity and negativity and it's not a very uplifting place. And I don't think those are, I, I often feel that they're often detracting from what they could be doing. Like it could be a positive uplifting and supportive experience for other trans people, especially people who are newly out or newly transitioning, but they just, they seem to miss the mark and tend to focus a lot more on negativity and critiquing people and like tearing each other down or saying like, like a lot of really toxic stuff, like, um, people saying there's a lot of terminology around whether or not someone passes and yeah. if they're if they're like you know whether or not they're meeting the mark and feeling like that they like they're never gonna be the way they want to look and it just it gets more and more negative and compounding with the negativity that I I haven't found them to be a very positive or uplifting experience so I don't tend to hang out in them so I hang out normally in mixed company spaces i don't really like concentrated spaces where everybody's there for the same reason is is that uh is is i guess uh are are you able to get the kind of support that you need from people when you're dealing with things that um people that have uh that don't have super similar experiences that you did you go through uh when you go to those areas uh, like I, guess as you get the I don't really need. need it, oh. but I'm also much older. Well, because I just mean, even as a person, I feel like uh, just just person. Uh, I think we all need support sometimes. And if we have um, things about us that people don't like, it can be hard just to uh, find a place where we can go and just uh, like vent or just talk about things. And if people already have something against you, it can be hard. Uh, well, that I, haven't really had that issue. I haven't really had that issue myself, but maybe for tough. others, it might be an issue. Um, I tend, like, where I probably spend the vast majority of my time these days is in Doobie's private server or personal server. Uh, so, like, I know them all fairly well, and we talk a lot, and, you know, there's we're there for each other, you know, if we're going through things. <laughs> So, like, after I lost my cat, Sammy, I spent a lot of time in there talking to people. Um, For trans stuff, I don't really talk about it, but I don't really run into issues where I need to talk about trans stuff. That's the thing that's, that's another thing that probably sets me apart from a lot of other trans people in these online spaces, is that for me, being trans is such a minor part of my identity sure it's i'm a woman right but i the reason i'm trans is because my being a woman is not in congruence with what society says i am that's what makes me trans 
So to I me, trans is, is nothing more than society's way of reflecting back on me that I'm different. It doesn't really mean anything more than that. And the only time I really apply the term trans and, and use it utility in my life is when I'm like going to the doctor and I'm pursuing trans specific treatment. So, so you just prefer to just be called woman then, yeah? Yeah, so I just say woman and like there's not a lot about me that's trans. I don't refer to myself as trans outside of utility purposes. I so it's such a minor part of my life that I'm never really talking about it. I um, and, I like that. I like that you have that. I wish uh, some of the people that I knew felt that way. Uh, well, who are, I, I figure it's like anybody like it's like else their with their... I figure it's like anybody else with their gender, right? Like somebody who is assigned male at birth and identifies as, you know, a boy, the, their gender is probably not that big of a deal, right? You know, it's just the way they were born. And likewise with a woman who is assigned female at birth, her gender identity is just how she was born and it, there's nothing more to it than that. And it's no no different for me. It's right. just that the gender that I express as, the rest of society said, well, well, you're different, so you're trans. And, you know, that's that's their way of, of um, reflecting back to me that I don't match what was assigned at birth. But there's not really anything more to it than that. I guess uh, I understand what you're saying. I think a lot of that's really hard for me to understand um uh when i i didn't really think of there was like a word for it but i like uh, i think i just started uh, uh openly saying that i'm non-binary like a year and a half ago i remember being a kid and like that the weirdest thing in the world that people would say is like that's a girl's thing or that's a boy's thing like it like just literally never made any sense to me right like mm -hmm. how activities or things or clothes could be gendered uh, like yeah, a, like, it is weird, isn't it? It's like one of my talking. some of my earliest memories are being like really weirded out by that, mm -hmm. uh, and just yeah. like it, it almost like, seemed I like adults it was played really... a silly game. Yeah, I always thought that was weird too about a lot of things. Like, why are dolls gendered? That didn't make any sense to me. Or like, why was home economics a girl's thing? That didn't make any sense. Why was shop a boy's thing? That didn't make any sense. These things just didn't, none of them ever made sense to me why they were a gendered thing and why they were supposedly socially off limits for one and not the other. I always thought that was very odd. And I, I see things as very, you know, neutral and, you know, anybody can, can do them. But I always expressed more femininely. So according to what society thinks is feminine. Hmm. And I yeah. always kind of adopted a lot more feminine aesthetics and and things that were considered to be feminine. And so I mapped better to what society considered to be feminine. And mm -hmm. which is it's funny because they they really shouldn't be feminine things. Like um I don't think there shouldn't be feminine things in my opinion. That's, that's, it is that's, weird. That's still, the, it, it, the only thing that really is that is significant for me is that my body to me doesn't look right. So like I, I look in that. the mirror in, in my mind's eye, I see myself with like a curvy body, you know, and yeah. with more generous hips, narrower shoulders. Right. But um, I don't have that. And that's where my dysphoria is a real problem because when I look in the mirror, it's just, it's a shock every time. And oftentimes I avoid looking in, like seeing. Well, you saw, you know, you saw the the panel I was on with Mister Girl. There, I, there are periods of time where I'll cover up all reflective surfaces in the house because I don't want to even see myself out of the corner of my eye because it's just such a jarring experience for me. So yeah. when my dysphoria is really bad, it can um, it can do that, and that's where my identity becomes kind of front and center. And I have to contend with it because otherwise there's 
there's never really any is if I'm never seeing my reflection, there's nothing there. I just live the way that I live and express the way that I express. But once I see my body in the reflection, it's just such a jarring experience and it just shocks me and um and can be very unsettling for me. Um I think I actually it doesn't understand look the way I see myself. Uh yeah, when uh it's the two months ago is when I told my therapist, uh I never really talked about it with I think I mentioned it like my wife before, and I was just thought it was a weird thing. When I was uh really young, I I didn't think that uh like I think like I just picked like another kid in school and for whatever reason, like I thought that's how I looked to everybody. Uh and I and it always like uh like weirded me out and I got like uh I wouldn't say it's shocked, but like, uh, like jarred and confused, like that I looked the way that I looked, and I didn't understand that, like some weird disassociation. Like I didn't want to look like that kid either, though. I just thought that I did. Uh, and like mm -hmm. whenever I interacted with a mirror, it was just really weird. And uh, I, I just sort of threw that at her uh, a couple months ago. And I was like, is that is that like a bigger deal than I think? Am I like, uh, am I like a weird uh, dissociation? I guess that's the closest thing that I can relate to that um but i don't uh i mean i don't love looking at myself but i don't i don't think i have any real issues with my body i just think that i'm a weird association with it i guess mm -hmm. um but like yeah when when you said that uh it, it would shock you like that's all i could think of is when i was a kid i would just like get confused because i was gonna say at first like well how are you shocked every time it's like you don't remember but i remember that it was always like confusing every time because like as soon as i would stop it would switch back to like that random kid and i like he he was a boy that i like like i knew he was there somewhere uh and i didn't even i didn't, I didn't like that kid either uh but for whatever reason my brain just told me that's what i looked like like different colored hair and everything it was super weird mm -hmm. And I, I didn't want to look that way or anything. And I don't have, I don't think I, I, I don't do that anymore. Um, but uh, I think, I think if I still did that, I'd, I, I'd probably freak out quite a bit. Uh, I, yeah, I still don't, I still don't have a lot of answers what was up with that. But um, yeah, that, that fucking sucks. Uh, it, but you don't really need a, you don't feel like you need a, a like people to like help you out when you're going through that um no i just kind of tough it out on my own i've really talked to anybody about it i'm not saying you're wrong but you consider that maybe even though you don't think you do you could you could use like people to have your back when it's hard like that well, maybe i don't know <laughs> all right um, um i don't want to like try to tell you you're doing anything wrong or anything but like I hope you think about that, because that sounds scary. I don't think I'd... I think that we can do a lot of stuff on our own, but it's probably better. It, it feels better when we don't. I, I probably do have... I mean, I definitely do have a bit of problem doing things on my own a bit much. Uh, it comes from a... comes from a rough life in my teens of uh, being homeless and living in very difficult conditions and uh kind of toughen things out on my own so i grew up without a lot of support and just kind of dealt with everything on my own it makes it hard to Didn't... ask for help <laughs> yeah you just get to a point where you get used to it you know and you don't really bother reaching out to others for help and that's just the way i've always been Probably yeah, not the healthiest too. way to operate, but it's kind of just how I developed. I get it. Uh, I was like 17 or 18. I remember sleeping in a elementary school uh, like uh, playground slide. I, I bought the last new Harry Potter book before I knew I wasn't supposed to buy the last new Harry Potter book. And um, <laughs> I used it as a pillow with my hoodie. And it was like cold and I was like really bummed out. I was like in the city that my girlfriend lived in. I was like 17 or 18. And her dad wasn't gonna let me stay over there, so like she was like the only person I knew right then. So I stayed there. I've been in homeless shelters, and it makes it hard when somebody's helping you. Like if somebody lets you stay, like to even ask like for anything, it makes it hard to go get food because you feel like yeah. oh, you're already giving me space. Like I shouldn't be taking any more. And I maybe maybe that's why I have a harder time asking people for help 
but um I think I've learned uh, that which is probably why I I've had a harder time but I do now uh, which is I think why I'm just saying like I hope that you at least think about it because it, it's made my life a lot easier um, mm -hmm. learning to say like um, it's it's okay if I ask somebody for help because that some of the stuff you just told me you go through sounds like shit uh, and I guess <laughs> I just hope that it, since you have to go through that and it's not your choice that um that, that you uh I'm just gonna say it how I think it and I hope you I hope you know how I mean it. I hope that you care enough for yourself to try to help yourself even when it's uncomfortable like that. Uh just to uh, just try or think think about trying whatever. I'm not trying to tell you what to do or like that you're not doing things right, but um I just think that the idea of going through that by myself would be really scary. And you sound like you're tougher than me too, so I don't know. Um I don't know how to not say something like that uh, when I hear something that sounds that scary. Um, and it doesn't sound like you're the kind of person that uh, deserves to go through all that stuff by yourself. That's fucked. Oh, uh, yeah. It would be for me. It would be for me. I, I, yeah, I tried really hard to not, like, you a bad bitch. I ain't trying to fucking knock your status down when I say that shit. That's why I'm trying to be so careful. Like, you have fully... Uh, implemented yourself as a bad bitch to me and i don't want to like <laughs> like well well maybe you ain't that tough like you probably are but um i think it's okay to uh soften up sometimes i'm, uh, I'm well aware that i probably shouldn't take on everything myself the way that i do uh but i just never break the cycle <laughs> of doing it uh well, you know never why. do until you do and i know that some stranger that you just talked to is going to convince you but uh I don't, I don't know how I don't know how to not say I hope you do it. Uh, if yeah. I did, I I I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't say it again. I just I don't know how to not. So just take that for uh, what it is. I guess. I appreciate it. Nah. Uh, good. Uh, thank you. Um. Oh my God. Uh, you, you're really fun to talk to. Melting through the time, and I I know I gotta go soon. What do I got left here? Uh, I got two left for you. Um, All right, shoot. Uh, what do you think that people in the trans community that do get upset when you stream with uh Max? Uh, and you know what? And since I've talked, it seems like you have uh you're getting hate from other communities too. And I didn't know that it was uh a lot of DGG. So when you get hate from streaming with Max, um. And maybe even for doing a stream with me, I don't know if there will be some kind of backlash because my project's about Mr. Girl. Um, what do you think that those people fail to understand? Well, first off, I don't really get hate from DGG. Oh, I thought you said you did. No, no, there was just that division at the time while that gotcha. freeway was going on with them. And, and I jumped in to ask if I was going to be canceled for still being cool with Max. But it wasn't like any people weren't actually jumping down my throat. It was just people were they were responding <laughs> spiritedly, but still friendly. Um, uh, yeah, I get a lot of the hate from the trans community, from the online left, even from my conservative friends. Well, I don't get hate from them so much as they just don't they don't understand why I would give Max even approve. the time of day. Yeah. So, um. What they're missing is charitability and the willingness to suspend their internal visceral reaction or their instinctive reaction. Mm -hmm. And that's not uncommon, especially in these online political activism and commentary spaces, because so much of what people do here is give a hot take, you know, sure. and you're kind of in a way, um, like incentivized to give extreme takes and biased polarizing takes sure. you're not really incentivized to be charitable that doesn't really net you a lot of views it doesn't get you a lot of subs it doesn't get you a lot of attention lukewarm doesn't really pass for much here but hot really gets you attention and so yeah. That's Nobody's true. really incentivized to suspend that initial 
instinctive reaction and look forward, you know, and walk cautiously with charitability. That's what people are missing. Well, let's say they had the charitability. What what do you wish that they would be uh, charitable towards? What like so they're they're charitable now. What is it that they weren't seeing before that you want them to see? Well, I don't want people to see anything. Like this is something oh. I talk to friends about. Sure, is that I am very. I have a close friend who is really strongly opposed to Mr. Girl. And I've told her and I've told others, hey, you are totally justified in what you're feeling about Mr. Girl. It's not like he's going out of the way to try to to, um, tailor his message to be well received by most people. Mm. He's doing himself a, a disservice and placing himself in a position where he's going to be judged harshly. And and he's really making uh, like a um, his optics are a disaster, and so it's totally justified in anybody coming to the conclusion that he's a rapist, that he's a pedophile, that he's a sexist, that he's a transphobe. Like all of those positions you could come to, all those conclusions you could come to, fully justified based on his own failure in the optics department. So. I am not trying to get anybody to um, to see things a certain way. What I would like is I'd like for people to be able to have the ability and the willingness to suspend their initial reaction and be a little more analytical and then come to an, a more, you know, uh, come to a conclusion that isn't as emotionally based. However, I don't think most people are going to do that, but that's what I'd like people to do. Um, could I try to steel man that in like one sentence? Sure. Um, it sounds like what you're saying to me that if you could get uh, if you could get people to uh, understand one thing is that they're um, they're not really like the thing that you misunderstand is that when you see these things, you're not really taking the time that you think you are to try to. Uh, see what's going. Does that make? Yeah. Is that like what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I I think that's a good take, and and that makes sense too. If you say I'm not trying to get them to see anything, I'm just trying to get them to actually look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good way of putting it. Thank you. Uh, it's the last one. Uh. And I'm a little sad because you're really fun to talk to. I, I I hope I can talk to you again sometime, or I hope you hang out in the Discord. You did the yeah. best. Uh, you had a you and Key really made my day in there. Like nobody uses this. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Being fucking hilarious in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was a fun interaction too. I see Key of Weird in my um in my Twitter mentions all the time. So we definitely have fun in Twitter and uh it was nice to jump in there and just immediately, you know, throw something funny in there and have key of weird weird immediately bounce off of it and do something funny in re- in response. Um if I, I have no right to, but if I could ever ask you a favor, if you just popped into one of his streams one time and fucking said like this shit on him real quick and leave, like it would make my world and he would he would die with happiness too i oh my god uh and i think ray's head would explode Uh, i actually did follow him right after i joined your your voice chat here because i didn't realize that he was a streamer until you told me he's so so then i went and i clicked on his name in discord sure enough there's a twitter link or a twitch link so i clicked on it and go forward and i followed his uh channel and i I, i gotta say i don't have uh very much attraction to males but that motherfucker is a gorgeous man he has the most beautiful beard i've ever seen in my life <laughs> i i will uh never stop uh sexually harassing him about his beard uh I, maybe i would if he if he didn't uh giggle every time i did it <laughs> I, I i really love keo he's a solid guy um, yeah yeah i i've never i've never like thrown out gift subs that like 
ever like ever really like but i i can't not do it for him he's he's really underrated uh I, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and just like use my time to like blow him up i i, I i've said my piece i i love him and uh he's, he's a solid guy uh and if you like your interactions yeah i think you'd have fun um yeah the the last one that i have here is why do you think it is that mr Grill is bulletproof Oh, I lied. I, I think he, I think part of his brutal honesty is it helps build an audience that isn't um, coming in with any kind of misconceptions about what they're, what they're following. A lot of streamers and content creators will come into it with a certain um, aesthetic that isn't entirely honest. It's oftentimes with even themselves. Like they'll come into it as a social, right? But down the line, as they get more and more experience in the space, they start to question or change their beliefs they and change their positions and evolve as a person that is very different from how they initially presented themselves. So when you start building an audience and a following, that audience and following oftentimes isn't happy when the streamer changes and him coming like like, yeah him coming right onto the open as (laughs) an unapologetic provocateur who is fairly brutally honest um i think sometimes he's not always honest with himself but fairly honest in his presentation that anybody subscribing to him kind of knows from the beginning what they're getting. And so they're not really going to be the kind to cut ties with him down the line when he does something that most people would consider to be shocking. That's fair. It's so offensive. He's, he's on, he's on, uh, he's on stable ground. It, it might, it might be covered in uh push pins and caltrops, but it, but it ain't it ain't caving in. Yeah, exactly. Just come on up here. Uh, you're gonna hurt your feet at first, but once you're up here, you get used to it, and it's never gonna change. Yeah. I I like that. It's a good take. I'm gonna think about that a lot. I don't. Uh, at least while you're saying that, I don't think I disagree with it. Uh, that's a yeah. Well, it's like with his, one. with his um, his. Real doll review, and with his very weird interaction with Destiny on, uh, you know, the other week, the, the one with him and I was yeah, oh. I wasn't really like there was nothing off-putting about that that would make me unfollow him. It was like, well, I could kind of expect this in the timeline of Mister Girl, right? So it was. None of it was all too like jarring for me to want to cut ties with him and stop following and such. Even though I got a few good laughs mocking the whole interaction with him and and Destiny and Erudite, and I made a meme about it. <laughs> um, I gotta see it. Oh, you haven't seen that one? Mm-mm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll have to show you that one. Now, let me see if I can track it down. Um, yeah, it's like it all fit within what I could expect to be a Mr. Girl brand timeline, right? Sure. Yeah, it's absolutely. When those, it's when those things don't fit what you would perceive as a, a creator's timeline or arc that you're going to find a bunch of people cutting ties. Yeah, I think the only time it, uh, so there was a couple panels where it didn't feel like I was watching Mr. Girl, but like the, the, um, the host was really aggressive and to some degree it's fair because he doesn't know how to not, uh, say what he's thinking when he's thinking it, um, which I get it, it's whatever. Uh, but when those times happened, that was the only times where I felt like I'm not watching a Mr. Girl stream. Like Mr. Girl goes on to Chud Logic, uh, in my head, I'm still watching Chud Logic streaming with Mr. Girl, you know, like it's mm-hmm. it's Mr. Girl, like he, uh, 
it, it, like it has to fit into the timeline because uh he has like a what's it called like a flat character arc he when he when he goes around he's changing the things around him he doesn't change uh he's impacting his environment but like it's it's always the same yeah i don't think i've ever seen him go on somebody else's stream and felt like um it wasn't the mr girl aesthetic the whole time yeah exactly it's pretty on brand yeah and then yeah, we'd probably he be offended with that kind of language. It's still a pretty inaccurate way to describe it as being on brand. Well, I, I hope that he would have the chair ability to understand that we know what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, we're not saying it's a, I, I, I don't think it's an act. So I don't think it's a real brand. He is, he, the brand is him. The brand is mm -hmm. Max Carson. Uh, I guess, um, I forgot to write it down. It was while we were talking, uh, you have, um, I think, a really good uh, outlook on uh, your experience. Uh, I guess everything you've said to me makes me think that you have a really good um, way of handling uh, the way the world treats you for saying I'm a woman. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, this is just a question for me because I don't, I don't, uh, I don't talk to a lot of people. Uh, the people that I know that have a similar experience have a very hard time with it, um, and my, uh, I don't necessarily know. Uh, I guess is there is there a, could you maybe give me any advice um, for? Uh, trying to help cultivate that kind of strength for my kid. Oh, um, so I, I think all I really did was, uh, I, I tried, uh, when he told me, I was like, all right, that's cool, man. Not a big deal at all. Uh, Levi, that's fine. He told his mom that he liked, uh, girls like a year and a half and his mom was the fucking worst about it. I was, uh, they like girls. I, what? I, uh, did he, so, uh, this, this he came out as trans. I want to say it's really hard to say. Like anywhere between like three and six months ago. Um, mm -hmm. but it was last year, a year and a half ago, something like that. Since COVID, I can't fucking do time. Uh, he told his mom that uh, that, uh, that he liked girls. So, um, his mom was terrible about it. Uh, like really, really like bad. Girls. Okay. Uh, uh, said some uh, things that I don't want to say. Uh, used mm. uh, used some uh, slurs for gay women uh, and yelled, and it was. Uh, Oof! I kind of find myself in a position where, like, I know I can't undo what just happened. Like, she did something that I can't remedy, uh, and all I can do is. Um, try to make sure that uh, he doesn't think that it's the same over here. Uh, and now, at least, I, I have my kid now full-time. Uh, oh, so you guys are separated. Oh, um, yeah. My wife is not uh, my kid's uh, biological mom, but uh, still the favorite parent. She wins that one. She deserves it. She's awesome. Um, but uh, I, I think that... Uh, I, I, I did my best to communicate that it's not like that here and that um uh that I literally couldn't possibly care less uh what they like and uh I think that went good but uh and I I think I think he feels really comfortable uh being himself at home and around us but I I, I guess the thing that really uh, freaks me out is that um I noticed that he makes excuses for people, like older people, when they don't want to use uh, his pronouns. And I'm like, well, you don't have to do that. And so I don't know if there's, um, I guess, yeah, just anything that uh, I, I would be stupid if I didn't ask uh, such a strong person. Well, and maybe borderline irresponsible as a father if I didn't ask you. And you don't have to answer <laughs> either. If he's it I is. don't know where I don't want to say, um, but uh, yeah, like 
these it's days it's getting harder and harder to communicate this to people and have them take it seriously um there's a there's such a strong reliance on seeking validation from the opinions and feedback from others that it's yeah. it's getting harder and harder to do this. I try to tell people, hey, you need to find your own validation in yourself. You can't rely on everybody else validating your gender for you because it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so you need to stop caring about what other people's opinions on your gender are and you just need to have your own uh you need to find solid ground within yourself Mm -hmm. where you can embrace exactly who it is that you are without any external validation the problem is that there's this big cultural push toward like you know getting everybody on board to use people's proper pronouns and respect people's gender identity and to shame people if they don't do it and call them transphobes if they don't do it. But the and problem is that. that there's still going to be people who screw up, even if they're not intentionally doing it. There's still going to be people making mistakes. There's still going to be people that have difficulty trying to figure it out. There's still going to be people who are going to look at you and wonder and doubt, and you're going to see it. There's still going to be people who are going to be hostile toward you or not going to, or are going to be religiously opposed. And there's nothing you can do about that. So you you have to find within yourself that that assurance of your own gender identity your own gender and the more that you rely the more that you depend on other people validating your gender for you the more difficulty you're going to have with your own self image and this kind of goes beyond even gender identity. This goes with like kids that grow up in the Instagram era and everything with all these really fake photos of their beautiful lives on display and their beautiful bodies that have clearly been photoshopped. It's the same kind of problem that there's a lot of seeking of validation from external sources and building one's self esteem upon the response from external sources. But you can't control external sources. So the only way to really find security as in your, you know, just yourself in general, as well as your gender, is to find that validation within yourself. Well, thank you. Uh... Unfortunately, that message is not well received these days. I've had people like say that I'm basically um, doing apologia for transphobes just because I said that kind of thing. Oh, no, that made perfect fucking sense. Uh, I guess um, I guess that's not too far out of line from what I thought. Uh, I guess uh, all when when he like quote unquote came out, it didn't seem like it was a big deal. I, I tried to just say like, Hey, that's cool. It's not a problem, and not make a big deal about it because it shouldn't be. Um, and like, hey, we Gucci. Uh, don't worry about it. And uh, I think the only other uh, like thing where it was like kind of, I'm not really. Sh- I hope that I made the right call. Was like, uh, I tried explaining to him when he was talking about um, the interaction with other people. I said, hey, it's t- it's totally. Uh, fair and valid how you feel about yourself, but I just need you to know that that's not what makes you special. Uh, you have all these other things about you that only you have. Like, um, there's uh, there's like uh, millions of other boys out there. You're one of them. That's not what makes you special. What makes you special is uh, the way you think and the way you feel and the way you treat people, that kind of stuff. I try to uh, uh, just make sure that, like, I guess... I guess I just try to not make, show that it's okay that it doesn't have to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's, uh, is that kind of what you're trying to say? Like it shouldn't be, uh, uh, well, I guess maybe I'm not, uh, I feel like my brain and my mouth are connecting super well. It's a big deal no matter what. (laughs) Yeah. um, You know, the, no matter what, there's going to be this incongruence with what the rest of the world perceives and the way that they treat you. 
unless you're really fortunate, right? You know, certain people who have both had the fortune of genetics as well as the fortune of being able to transition early can get away with, can kind of pass in a world that reflects back on them very much what they feel. But most of us don't get that. Most of us don't get the transition really early. And most of us have had exposure to hormones during developmental periods that are irreversible. Right. And so we have to contend with the incongruence with the rest of the world reflecting back onto us something that doesn't match what we feel. So it's always going to be, it's usually going to be pretty significant for anybody. But the most important thing to realize is that you can't rely on the reflection from other people for your happiness. Gotcha. Okay. Especially for those of us who are male to female trans, because we usually have much more distinct traits that don't, um, that, that definitely stick out and get noticed. Yeah, I, I guess I would imagine that um, for the, like, your entire body, it's a lot easier to uh, add things. Like, you can add, uh, add fe adding features uh, where there's, like, uh, less definition. seems like it's easier than um, taking mm -hmm. away features. Yeah, exactly. I can't, can't take away my broad shoulders and my six-foot-one. <laughs> right, but you can make smaller shoulders look more broad. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, thanks. I hope I hope uh, my by the way, didn't cross a line or anything. No, that's fine. Okay. And I linked for you that uh, that meme I was talking about that you wanted to see. Oh yeah, with dude. Mr. Girl, Erudite, and Destiny. Wait a minute, that's not Zonia. There you go. Did well, did you put it in my Discord? I put it in your stream chat. Wow. Oh. oh, that's right in front of my face. Let's see what you got. Oh boy, I'm putting that on the screen. Let's see. <laughs> Holy fuck. I wasn't ready. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that that whole thing, that whole that whole stream. Uh, the first half really put me on edge, uh, and I was like worried. But then it was like the most Jesus Christ. <laughs> it ended up being the most um, emotionally like sincere and proper conversation I've ever seen. Uh, uh two adult streamers had with each other i think uh <laughs> yeah. it was so good uh and uh, I, I don't know what i was talking to but i was like it, it actually makes me a little bit upset because that's how i want to talk to people that's how i when i talk to people like i want them to talk to me back like that that's how i talk <laughs> like uh and it was that was fucking dope and it's really uh i it blew my mind that Mr. Girl and Destiny didn't seem to realize that at a certain point, uh, or maybe they did, and like magically their pride vanished to the point where they ignored the fact that Not So Erudite turned into a marriage counselor after they told her to leave. Yeah, that was so good. I loved I, it. That's why I made that meme. I made it as soon as uh, it got into that. Oh, uh, man. If you ever rewatch <laughs> that video, like I'm in the chat, like, oh my God, this is marriage counseling. Like, like Dude, seems... check out. Oh, um good. check out this tweet that happened right around the same time uh, let me plug it into your stream chat for you oh you'll see i was talking about the same thing it's a little embarrassing to admit by getting into this installment of the tgg of the live soap opera really hoping that kyla can help repair steven and his relationship <laughs> <laughs> is there is anyone else here a steven plus max fan <laughs> it's phenomenal oh man i hope i sure hope i like the other one you know what 
you did the right thing with the Steven plus Max. There is no cute Hollywood name for those two names and mashing together. No, there really isn't. I was trying no. to think of one too. I was like, um, the only thing that I thought of was like Maxtony, but the reason why I didn't really like it was because it like if One's I'm using Destiny, that's the screamer yeah. name. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. That that so, bothered me as soon as you said it too. I get you. We're on yeah. the same page there. <laughs> yeah. Uh I Mr. almost Destiny's said Maxtony, but I was like, nah, it's just it's it my my pedantry is not gonna allow me to type that out. <laughs> I get it. I uh not as much anymore. I used to write and I would uh I would cringe every time I thought about it if I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, even though yeah, it's it's good. It's really good. Uh <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad somebody else uh somebody else saw it when it happened because I was like, how did they not notice? Because like, I feel like they like if either of them noticed and they'd be upset about it, right? Yeah. And from earlier in the conversation, <laughs> I had this tweet, which you'll probably get the reference. Most people did get the reference. Did or did not? Did. Oh. Yeah, Erudite caught it too. She oh. liked it. Oh, dude. When I when I read her <laughs> fucking name off uh, on that tweet, I was like, I know that I'm saying her name right only because of how many times Destiny got it wrong. <laughs> I, I did say it right, right? It's Kyla? Yeah, it's yeah, Kyla. Yeah. That's the only... Yeah. I'm so bad with names, but like hearing Destiny get it wrong so many times made me hyper aware of her name. <laughs> uh, that was so funny. I was laughing my ass off listening to that, and so then I was just like, I tweeted that out. <laughs> And Erudite liked it. She, she, I think she retweeted it even. Let me see. Oh, no, but she liked it. Someone else retweeted it. <laughs> At a point, I had to wonder if, uh, like, I wondered if he started to do it to fuck with her because it was so infrequent, but he still looked embarrassed when she called him on it. I don't know if Destiny's that good of an actor. Yep. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Um, well, now that I know who you are, now I know when I see you in my likes and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, me. <laughs> I, I hope I hope this was a, a good stream for you. Um, it was, yeah. As I say, I I I think I've like exclusively streamed with people that don't really stream. Uh, Kia Weird, I I interviewed him because he's a fascinating fellow. Um, and he actually uh, blew up my mind and probably uh, forever scarred me in that interview. Uh, I think about it every single day. I, I feel like somebody, uh, like, punked me, but, like, with magic. I, I can talk to you about it in, like, Discord or something sometime. It was fucked up. He got me weird. Uh, hmm. But other, other than him, who uh, streams, I really talk to anybody. Uh, who really streams prior to this? I don't think, and um, so I was. I, I'm glad. I'm glad it went well. Uh, and I, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, yeah, right. There was yeah. long stretches where well. I, the fact that we were streaming even vanished. Is your good conversation? You're good people. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed the conversation myself. It's nice to get to know you. Thank you. You as well. Um, and. Uh, I, I really hope uh, that you you get uh, some more traffic over to you because you're fucking cool. Like I, like be cool louder. I'm mad that I didn't know that you were this cool before I talked to you. You gotta be louder about it. Uh, Not just when there's six other isn't... people talking around you. Well, that isn't really my personality, but uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> you're you're depriving the people. <laughs> uh, wow. on rare occasion i get into that one and once in a blue moon conflict on a panel with someone and end up being loud but it's very very rare well i uh, I, I hope for uh it's not even for you it's for the people that uh i feel stupid for not uh not knowing and checking out your shit sooner but um it is Super late. I haven't eaten dinner. It's the last three days in a row. I haven't eaten dinner till after midnight. I've been so busy. But um it this was uh this was the, the easiest for me to uh go without noticing that I didn't uh I uh, said I I uh I'm glad that you said you'll stay in touch. I hope you fuck around in the Discord. I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to your stuff. Um, All right. 
and just thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for interviewing me. And uh, shout out to chat. Thanks for watching. And uh, I guess, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. it it's mutual. Uh, have, have, a, have a really good night, Sonia. All right, you too. Thanks. Did I just call you Elder or what? You, you I... can call me uh, Elder Drazi Elder. You can call me uh, Jamie. Uh, All uh, right. Fucking Josh did. He was like the first person like, like on Discord or anything that used my real name. And I was like, that's weird. I don't hear that name <laughs> when my headset's on. Uh, I think a lot of people just default to Elder. Uh, I didn't really expect them to. All it right. seems like a weird power move that I didn't intend. I'll stick with Elder then. That works. Okay. Sounds cool too. Thank sounds you. uh yeah, sounds almost, you know, old god kind of sounding, I don't know. Um or great old one kind of sounding. That's what it really it's, sounds like. Uh it's from Magic the Gathering. It's like their uh Eldrazi are their big uh big like Cthulhuian type of like horrors. They're oh, like the yeah. scariest thing in like the multiverse in it and i really really like them and so elder drowsy was just like a play on the word oh ah. yeah okay uh, Drazi. i know what you're talking about you yeah. nailed it <laughs> um yeah well you have a good night you too zonia take care all right bye bye